Welcome back to Call Me By Your Game, the podcast where I, your host, Connor McCabe, normally bring on a guest to hear from them about a meaningful or memorable game from a particular moment in their life. And also, on those normal episodes, I talk to people not only about the games themselves that they are bringing on to discuss, but we get into the context from their life of when and how and maybe even why they had this meaningful time with a particular game. Um, But today, folks, we got something special coming up for you. We are going to be doing another top 10 favorite video games episode. This is part three, so buckle up because it's about to get crazy. A little bit of housekeeping up top uh, is that anything that myself or our guests plug on the show, you can find a link to that in the show notes. So if I plug something, look by my name. If uh, if uh, Johnny Appleseed plugs something, look by Johnny Appleseed's name. You're going to find what they've got going on. Um, you can also support the show a few different ways. We are all over social media. We're on Instagram, Twitter, and Blue Sky. So if you want to connect with us and interact with us there, see the cool art I make for every episode, learn about our guests and what they're up to, how to, and how you can support them, or um, just uh, you know find all the cool updates that I have. You can find us on all those uh, social media platforms. Uh, you can also support the show by leaving a rating and review wherever you get your podcasts. If you do that on iTunes or Apple, I can read those, so I'll read them on the show. But if you do it anywhere else, uh, that still means a lot, but they don't list those publicly. So reach out to me, DM me on any number of social media platforms, and I'd be happy to read it on the show. Um, and uh, you can also share the show with a friend, whether they love video games or any of the possibly 40 or more that are going to be mentioned on this episode. Uh, you can check out our Discord. We have a wonderful Discord for the entire network over at Super NPC Radio of people talking about all the podcasts we do, uh, video game music, even we talk about crazy stuff like sports over there. It's wild, um, but there's a link to our Discord in the show notes. And lastly, you can check us out on Patreon. Um, in the future, you listener, you know what we're covering for our next Games Club, but currently we're in the midst of the election. People are getting out the vote. We have people going door to door, uh, campaigning for candidates. Uh, so I'm really excited to see what we have uh, that it's going to be picked by our $10 DJ Toad tier patrons. Um, but uh, in where I am now, we're wrapping up our Sonic Adventure series where we cover that game over 12 weeks. Some say 12 weeks too many of Sonic Adventure. Not me, but some. Uh, anyway, we've got a ton of great bonus content over there you can find again at patreon.com slash super radio. Folks, it wouldn't be a top 10 episode if I didn't have at least one guest. And folks, we've got three of just the greatest sweeties you could ever ask for. So please, welcome to the microphone first. Uh, gosh, I, I didn't do this last time either. I'm going to say from episode five, all the way back on episode five, we have, uh, talking about Pokemon Blue, we have streamer, father, and felon, Jake Sprague. Welcome back to the show. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I can't believe the intro is already over. It felt like I it know. just started. <laughs> You know what? It, it's it's things that you love that they they go by so fast. It didn't feel long just, at all. I can't just believe we're already into the show. It's crazy. Uh, well, Jake, good to have you back, pal. I mean, episode five was well, legitimately we've all we almost recorded that four years ago. Uh, so I guess that means we've probably known each other for I don't know seven or eight years. I figured we should quantify it today. I think that would be important to date it. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. I'm not sure exactly where it started either, but it's been <laughs> one hell of a ride. Uh, <laughs> it has, it's been great knowing you. And, and I'm, hey, so who I'm knows? happy to be back, my man. Hey, I'm glad you're here. Maybe it'll end today. We'll have to find out. Um, we also have just another wonderful guest. Uh, in, within that first year, this person came on to discuss Counter-Strike. Please welcome streamer, father, felon, favorite of the network, Kristen Thorson. What's up? That's me. That's those three things. That's how everybody describes me. Uh, yeah, it's been a while. Last time I was on, we were talking about video game while. guides. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I yes. knew. I set myself up for that. <laughs> Remember, like really before did. we were recording, this is a little insider. Um, oh, Mike was calling us all the peak of comedy, and that's just a little hints right there of the peak of comedy. <laughs> to me, that's just like evidence uh, of only that. It's indisputable at this point. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes, yeah, so glad to have you on. Uh, I've had you on a number of episodes over the years on both Call Me By Your Game, but also other stuff on the network. I think yeah, that's most right. recently. Yeah. Um, for this series, though, we did on, on the co-op series, which is a Patreon exclusive, uh, for the most part. Uh, we talked about Half-Life, where for the, which I played for the first time. And by the way, 
I'm thinking about playing number two next year, so I'm going to have to have you back for that if so. Yeah. Um, fucking well, guy. This fucking guy, it's 2023. He's like, I'm thinking about playing Half Life 2. Uh, oh, I don't know. We'll hey, consider. better yeah. late than never, you gatekeeper. Yeah. Uh, I famously <laughs> get to all sorts of things late, whether it's video games, uh, movies, anything in pop culture. And I think it was it was 2015 that I asked my roommate if he had heard of Kid Cudi, who had <laughs> been around for, I don't know, making music for eight years at that point. So You hear this well, graduation as album as by you Kanye? And- as long yeah. as you and Jake have known each other. Hey, Pretty, there you go. Nice wow. callback. Look at that. Uh, hey, that voice you heard, we got to get him on the pod. Please welcome. Uh, I, the first episode you were on would have been your episode on Final Fantasy VI, the longest episode ever on this podcast. <laughs> of course. Literally two and a half hours. Please welcome streamer, father, and felon, Mike Steele. Hi. Thanks, everybody. Uh, pro tip, if you're listening to this episode and you got your AirPods in, just say, hey, Siri, Skip three minutes and 30 seconds, and you'll go straight to the meat of the episode. Nice. Yeah, go ahead and try that. Can you, can Siri do that for you? Yeah, I do that all the time. That's how I skip, skip ads and podcasts. I'm listening <laughs> to. Skip ads and Connor's intro on his podcast. Uh, totally fair. Hey, Connor, uh, my- I like your intro. I appreciate that. Do I get uh, bonus points? You do, and that's just <laughs> the compliment I needed to uh, not totally scrap it for the next episode. Uh, <laughs> Mike, welcome back, pal. How you doing? I'm doing great, man. Thanks for uh, having me back. I just like feel like I've done like a dozen of these things with you at this point, and they're they're fantastic every time. This is an exciting one, so thank you so much for having me, and especially with the people you're having me here with. I couldn't be happier. I mean, this is like I've been curating these. I've got a wonderful little notes app going in my phone. Uh, that's got like my, my rosters of ideal three people together, and folks, you three were at the top of the list together because uh, a little peek behind the curtain. Uh, and if you, you know, I'm assuming you're a longtime listener to the show, you know where all the the web of of our connections go. But Jake is the reason that I even know Kristen and Mike, and now I'm getting these folks on at least once a year for a podcast. Uh, so Jake, on behalf of the three of us. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank That's you. That's so the much. real reason we're all gathered here. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> I don't do it for the thanks. Never expected, but always appreciated. Good, good, good. Uh, but yeah, I, I had to have the three uh, uh, Las Vegas buddies. I mean, I know Jake that you've known Mike since elementary school, at least. But how middle long? Middle school, you, yes, yeah. yeah. Middle school. Um, how long, Kristen? How long have you known everybody? Um, a long, a long time. Like, 50, dating. Close, he like, cares about dating it. Yeah. We need to date it. <laughs> I know important. that it's at least okay. I'm gonna tell you a sad story, Connor. I know that oh. I've known them <laughs> since at least before I was 21. Because for my 21st birthday party, I invited people to go to <laughs> Buffalo Wild Wings. <laughs> And none of my, only one of my like, like friends, friends showed up, and I had yes. only just kind of met Jake and Mike, and they both showed up. Yeah, too. we both oh. showed up. And there I was go. like, and so, and I'm just about to be 34, so somebody else can do that math. Uh, I think that's like 14 years. Yeah, yeah I barely wow. knew you, and I definitely didn't know your friend. And we're just like at Buffalo Wild Wings, yeah, the... and it was literally those three people. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, is this on the Strip of Las Vegas, or is no. this on like the outskirts? <laughs> it's like in it's all, the burbs. Everything in Las Vegas exists yeah. <laughs> on one strip. Yeah. yeah. I recently learned I went to Las Vegas uh, for a, for a bachelor party. Uh, this summer, and I learned that there's another strip called Fremont Street. That's oh, the yeah, superior that's, one. Yeah, that's a real what? That's a shithole. That's no. That's the <laughs> Jake can vouch that if you're gonna go out drinking and partying, it's more fun to go to Fremont. I than it is work to the strip. on Fremont and Street, Jake, and it's a. I used it's to a, also. It's a <laughs> piss soaked, uh, 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 ill refute filled sponge of evil. Yeah, you're saying piss soaked like that's bad. Yeah, mm. there are definitely parts where you walk past and you're like, because <laughs> it just reeks of piss. <laughs> but you just don't stop, and you don't uh, you don't stop for the man who's rolling a beer can down the <laughs> the parking garage ramp at you. Uh, <laughs> you. You just keep going. Yeah, and, uh, working downtown at Fremont, it's like being in a Donkey Kong Country level where you you, know, you, you, you don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, it, everything's crazy. It's kind of like Hollywood. I imagine. like I've been to Hollywood once, and it's like you know, you go do your thing, yeah, do the uh, touristy stuff. Ignore, don't pay for pictures. You're good. 
Absolutely. Uh, Mike, while I'm glad you brought it back to video games and great save there, uh, I did. we didn't exactly great get save, a comment. That sucked for a while, Mike. <laughs> yeah, I know. I really stepped in and saved the terrible show, and now it's back on stable terms. Thank you, God. You can tell that it's been a while since Jake's been able to, like, uh, to uh, uh, pitch, like, a funny idea on the way I say something, because it's, like, every <laughs> sentence he is nailing it. I was like, how is Connor going to finish this sentence? Because yeah, I was like... I, there's Honestly, like no good way. <laughs> it's been a long time since Jake's been funny. <laughs> He's so happy to be back at it. <laughs> Uh, but we didn't get uh, the. I didn't want to move on before we got Jake's confirmation of whether Fremont Street is the superior place to party. Uh, I mean, it's probably a superior place to party if you live in Las Vegas. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't call it another strip. I don't know what I guess I don't know what a strip is. Yeah, I guess fair. that's is true. It's just a line a, of things. If you're a tourist, so a yeah, don't go to Fremont. Yeah, I mean, the strip. the strip is Las Vegas Boulevard, and Fremont Street is Fremont Street. So yes, they are both a line where things <laughs> take place. So yeah, <laughs> Tropicana is not too bad if we're talking about strips. Oh, <laughs> don't forget to hit up Lone Mountain. <laughs> Lone yeah. Mountain Lone Road Mountain has some crazy, crazy areas on there. You'll run into a Cafe Rio, yeah. the Bee <laughs> Farm. <laughs> Santa Fe Station, the cemetery. It's crazy. <laughs> the Get Mormon Church. This. Stop this, Connor. What are you doing? It sounds like a strip to me. <laughs> uh, I'm so tickled already. This this is so much fun. Um, uh, I almost feel like could, couldn't catch my voice there. Yeah, it uh, sounded like you folks, meant it. <laughs> we have uh, an incredible task today, uh, as my voice cracks, uh, where uh, we are going to be going through the, our three guest top ten favorite video games of all time. And the way we start these episodes, we're getting a, we're getting an immediate no from yeah, Jake. Yeah, Jake seems <laughs> uh, unresponsive uh, I, to, to being positive about this. Well, I honestly, putting this list together, I'm, I'm mad about it. In general, <laughs> like... I. I don't like my list. I yes. like all these games and I hate like I hate having a list without so it's many tough. good games oh, on it. It's like yeah. it's oh, maddening yeah. looking at this list cuz there I know I'm forgetting a game too and mm-hmm. I'm going to feel like an idiot like I really was upset the entire time I put my <laughs> list together. I'm still mad about it now cuz I did you a top so 20 welcome. And so yes. I'm looking at the other 10 and being like, "Oh, it really sucks that that thing is just like just mm-hmm. outside because I can only go to 10. So I, yeah. I know what you're talking about there. Jay. Yeah. A very, very difficult assignment. Uh, even on the, the most recent one we did, we heard from different people on like why they made their list the way they did. Um, and then also people being upset of like, couldn't you have just given me any limitation to make this easier on me would have been nice, but I didn't do that. So it's going to be fun. The The way uh, that we're going to uh, kick off um, this whole uh, shebang is that I'm going to go ahead and uh, update the listener because I know they're just frothing at the mouth. They got to know, has my top 10 list changed since we did the last of these in uh, September, the last version of this? Yeah. And folks, I'm here to tell <laughs> folks, you. Folks, the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> the folks, the answer is yes. And I think I'm going to say it even if it doesn't change just so people can be reminded of it. Um but here we go. Um, and just to give give you an idea, it's still such a nostalgia heavy list. Like there's no denying it. I've played better games than some of them that are on here. Some of the there's t- at least two that I've played for the first time in the last few years. But very. I like how you're qualified to your top ten list. Is guys, this isn't my top ten list. <laughs> no, it is, it is. Like if I look at my heart of hearts, like balancing the nostalgia with the games I've actually enjoyed playing and all that jazz. Here we go. So number 10, currently, barely hanging on this list, this game has slipped lower and lower as we've gone on, uh, is Halo Combat Evolved. Uh, Number 9, we have The Elder Scrolls Skyrim. Uh, Number 8, we have uh, Portal 2, uh, a game I didn't play until last year. Um... Uh, we've we're getting a lot of confusion already from our from our uh, our guests here. Uh, number seven, a game I played in 2020 for the first time, Shadow of the Colossus. Uh, number five, we're in the top five, folks. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater three. Number four, Super Smash Brothers Melee. Number three, Pokemon Silver. Uh, oh shit! Hold on. Oh, Wait, none God. of these games are on the list. Did I skip a number? <laughs> yeah, I, I think like you skipped games. six. I think you skipped six. Okay. Okay. Because I thought you Halo... got to five too fast. Yes, that's that's what it happened. It did feel like that. 
Uh, t- I was scrolled down on my Google sheet here. Ten Halo Combat Evolved. Nine no, Skyrim. Don't do all this. <laughs> uh, eight <laughs> Portal Two. Seven Shadow of the Colossus. Six Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Five Super Smash Bros. Melee. Uh, four Pokemon Silver. This is just a test if I can count. Uh-huh. Three Backyard Baseball. Two thousand one. Two Super Mario sixty four. And folks, unprecedented. Uh-huh. We have a tie for first place. Uh, I don't know if any of us are on board. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I can tell nobody is based on that. Unprecedented. <laughs> and let me tell you, no one yeah. likes this. Because I played a game recently that shot to the top of my list. Uh, it's one of the greatest video game experiences I've ever had. I'll list the first one. 1A still remains the Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask for me. It's been my favorite for a long time. But 1B is... The Legend the of Zelda, list. Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, we're going to do a, a follow-up to our Zelda Games Club episode where where we talk about this game. But yeah, uh, I could go back and forth on why. Like, I, I thought about even putting it above Majora's Mask, but currently it is 1B. Wow. Uh, You're a little so it, bump, it bumped every Metal Gear Solid on the list? <laughs> yeah, me- the closest Metal Gear Solid is, is not one of Mike's favorite because he hates Big Boss, but it's uh, number 12 is Metal Gear Solid 3, Snake Eater. That's the worst one out of all of them. <laughs> <laughs> Mike just is mad he can't sing that song. He doesn't uh, have the range. Snake Eater! Yeah, see? Zoom Mike just canceled nope. most of that out. <laughs> um... Anyway, that's my current list. Uh, 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 it, it's gonna change. It's gonna change for the rest of time. But that's my top ten Ooh, list. Um, I hope that uh, Mario sixty four gets removed. Oh, that's the first change. <laughs> that'd be a, that'd be an awesome change. <laughs> it just <laughs> just gets totally kicked off from from its number two spot. Um, folks, before we get into your top tens, I know that Jake had expressed a little bit about making his list. Did any of either Mike or Kristen or Jake? Did you want to add on to anything you wanted to share about? How you're feeling going into this, or what it was like making your list? I feel. Uh, oh, go ahead. Go yeah. Ahead. Uh, sorry, I just I was upset making it. I don't <laughs> like my list. <laughs> I'm not. These aren't my top ten games. So the funny thing but. is, you're saying what Connor should have said about his list. <laughs> like, yeah. like you're you're giving the honest version of what Connor should have said about his own list. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm. Ha- I was. It's cool to do, and I did weight things also based on, like, nostalgia, and mm-hmm. it's, you know, it's not just that the game was maybe as good, but it's the moments I had with it were yeah. important enough. So, yeah, that's kind of how I feel about this list, which is why I think it's a terrible list. I wouldn't <laughs> listen to my list. <laughs> it's it's an impossible task. Uh, Kristen, you were going to say something as well. Yeah, for me, like, my top ten is mostly, like, games that i have like i replay i replay at least one of these games on these lists this list like at once a year probably i play a couple of them yeah. annually and then like amount of time spent in these games overall and like a little mix of like yeah like important moments uh and then mm. also like years ago mike and i did a top 20 list and Ooh, yeah, yeah and i looking comparing my top 10 then and i did have one like how jake was saying he was like he knew he knows he forgot one i had one that the second after we were done doing that i was like fucking forgot this game oh, <laughs> so no. other than that game making the list now like my top 10 is pretty close to what it was then cool. maybe just reordered uh so i feel good about mine i i'm decisive i'm like nice. jake oh, yeah <laughs> okay, that's cool. cool no that is, no that is cool i respect that i'd say similar to <laughs> Kristen. i did I did what I always do. Uh, Jake and I used to do um, top 10 of the year. We uh, At one time, Ooh. we did top 20 of the generation, and I believe mm-hmm. that was the Wii, PS3, 360, and DS generation, I think, is what we did. Uh, mm. So my process is always literally go online and look at a list of every game that's ever come out. And just on a piece of paper, just any game that I'm like, I like that game, I write it down. That's serial mm-hmm. killer shit. Uh, I know it's crazy. <laughs> I, I I know what I do is nuts. Uh, uh, but I also have a lot of time at work where I'm pretending to be busy, and so I just do this. Um, and so uh, then I take that list once I've looked at every game that's ever been released, and then I go, okay, what are the games I'm passionate about? Then I take that list, and I go, okay, what of these games are like special? And then I take that list and go. What are the games I can't do without? And then I fill in the spaces afterwards. Mm. But then also I was able to check against that list with what me and Kristen did. And I was pretty happy to say that my like what I would have called my top 20, all 10 of the games that I put on did on the show with Kristen were there. And mm. 
the order that they're in is very, very close. I only had really one change where a game wasn't on there that sh that I that like left the top twenty and entered the top ten, and mm. the order is about the same. There's like a couple small differences, so I feel real good about mine. Killer. Uh, a quick note on Mike saying he pretends to be busy at work. Uh, Jake, didn't you used to be Mike's boss? Hey, you know, he <laughs> pretends now. He never did then. No, not then. <laughs> I only do that now. It's a, it's a habit I picked up afterwards because I was like, well, now that I don't respect my boss anymore, I should pick up some bad habits. <laughs> <laughs> when no, did you checking. two work together? Uh, we, or we, what were you doing? Yeah, we worked at a window and door installation company for what, mm -hmm. Mike? Seven, eight years. years. Ten yeah, years, Yeah, we worked maybe? there for a while. We managed the office, and we scheduled things with the crews and stuff. But I don't want to <laughs> <don't wanna> talk <laughs> about this because it <laughs> no, sucks. No, Jake, <laughs> occasionally we'd put a trim on the bottom of yeah. a wall. Sometimes we'd even cut the true wood for the boys. Look, here's the thing. Could we tell you if a door is plum right now? Sure, we can tell yeah. you if it's plum. Yeah. Is that transom the right color? Is it black or is it brass? They're not the same thing, but they look a lot alike. Inside uh, door talk. Let's not move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to talk more about left-handed swing doors. doors. List. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, Cedar. Exo slider. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> Patio French. Parentheses with light. <laughs> parentheses. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, please get me out of this hell. Okay, cool. <laughs> I, need well, to, I need to be saved. <laughs> well, let's go ahead. What we're going to do is we're going to go as if we were doing a snake-style draft. So we're going to start with Jake. We're going to then go Kristen, Mike. And then Mike, after listing his number 10, will list his number 9. And we'll go back through that way and just going back and forth. So, Jake, why don't you kick things off for us and list your uh, number 10? My number 10 game probably could be higher. It had I feel like it had to make this list, uh, even though I don't want the list to be only filled with games like this because I feel like this type of game just means so much to me. And my number 10 game is a JRPG for the SNES. It is Chrono Trigger, one of Ooh. the best JRPGs ever. I remember when I got Chrono Trigger, I remember getting it from Target, I want to say. I just saw it in the case. This was back when you didn't know if anything was any good. Like, I've mm -hmm. bought games and where you're like, oh, I hope this is good and they're trash. But I just saw it. I think I kind of understood that Square was an RPG thing. It looked cool. You know, they were throwing fire onto the sword on the cover. And I was like, this will be good. I brought it home and I remember playing it all night in my room to the point where my dad was getting up in the morning for work. And he's like coming in. He's like, have you been up all night <laughs> playing this game? I remember I was at the, the like jungle, like the Jurassic moment in the yes, game. And he yeah. made me go to sleep at that point. And, uh, I just, I loved it so much. It was like, it was perfect at that time. And I still feel like for its time, of course, and for the genre, it's just like a, it's a perfect game. It just feels like a perfect JRPG. I'm sure it hasn't aged super well because nothing does, but it's beautiful. I want to, I want to throw something out there really quick. I also made Jake and Kristen's lists. I didn't order them, but I know a lot about them. So I made their lists, and I want to see how well I did. And right now, I'm one for one with Jake. Nice. Wow. And that, nice. as in, like, it's on the list, or you yes. even nailed, like, number I, I don't 10? Know. Okay. I don't know. How, there was, ordering is always going to be, like, all over the place, so I didn't yes. bother. But, yeah, I did make both of their lists. Because I want to. Yeah. Because I, I was like, I wonder if I could do this for them. Kristen was a little harder. Uh, because I, I know I'm very top heavy with what I know about Kristen. Like I could probably order and name her top five, but making the full 10 was harder. But Jake is just like, I like, yeah. Yeah. got a tattoo on my I, back. <laughs> I didn't know where I was going to put some of this stuff, but it had to make the list. Truly keep us posted on that, Mike. I do want updates <laughs> as we go. Uh, uh, Jake, I, I've been playing this game. This is my top 20 personal favorites. Uh, I've been playing this game my whole life since I first emulated it back in, in like junior high. I finally saw it all the way through last summer. And for my, I, there is nostalgia tied to it, having played a decent amount before. But I felt like it held up pretty dang well. Yeah. Yeah. I I'm played actually, it for the first time a couple of years ago, and I think it held up. Yeah. Really? I'm, That's yeah. great. It's always hard because, you know, a game will. A game will do something so well, and then other games will just, you know, continue to ape it and continue to expand on that to the point where you're like, yeah, I guess, 
when I go back and play whatever, it's not as good as maybe some of the stuff, but it almost like created some of the amazing stuff that you see. And Chrono Trigger felt like not only did it create some cool gameplay mechanics, the story was really cool, but also it was just, it's just perfect. It was like perfect version of that game. And I feel like you can't ask for much more in a game than to do exactly what it's trying to do and, and nail it. Yes, I'm actually absolutely. replaying it on DS right now. I found my DS version, and I oh, went yeah. to Orlando recently, and so I brought my 3DS with me for the plane rides, and it still very much holds up. And you got the cutscenes on that version. Uh, Yeah, kind of. They're not the same as the PlayStation 1. Oh, gotcha. But they have, like, uh, versions of them. Okay, cool. Well, Jake, thank you for listing your number 10. I'll tell you so You're far, welcome. pal, good list. Put hey, list thank gone. you. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Um, Kristen, let's move to you and let's hear your number 10. Yeah, uh, my number 10 is, uh, I mean, these guys are probably going to talk a lot about Super Nintendo games that mean nothing to me because I was a <laughs> Sega Genesis household. Uh, so I'm going to take this moment to praise Sonic the Hedgehog 2 uh, because that's my number 10. Uh, that was like... When we, growing up, we had Sega Channel for a little bit, but other than that, we had like five Sega Genesis games, and one of them was Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and I just played it. Like, that is all I played was Sonic 2, mm-hmm. um, and I was terrible at it. I don't think I ever got past, like, uh, the little Volcano Mountain level up until um, 2020. I finally beat it for the first time, and now I can sit down and just play it in a sit. like, when I'm like, I feel like I'm going to play Sonic 2, and just yeah. beat it in a sitting. Um, yeah. It's... So good. Like I to the I can't play like Mario game. Like I 3D Mario's, I'm okay at them, but platformer Mario's, like they just don't register in my brain because I'm mm-hmm. like, I really I know it's a meme, but like I gotta go fast. <laughs> like I uh, <laughs> there's no time to be fucking stopping and timing where I'm gonna land. I just wanna zoom across the screen as fast as possible. Um uh, and yeah, it just had a huge impact on me. It's like the game, the first game that got me into video games like other than Ooh. that it had all been like disney games and stuff like that and um a yeah, lot of Sonic. mickey yeah a lot of um the <laughs> disney's the little Mer- disney's ariel the mermaid for sega genesis <laughs> which uh sucks ass um so yeah the song is hedgehog 2 uh Killer. super recommend if you like sonic games i like it better than sonic and knuckles people who think sonic and knuckles are the, is the best are nuts they're nuts killer I, Sonic um, and Knuckles is very good. I don't know if it's the best. Also, one for one. With <laughs> I feel like I sent you my top 20 very recently, so. Uh, I didn't cheat. I'm not a okay. fucking cheater, Chris. <laughs> All right. But I am a liar. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of cheaters, Mike, why don't you go ahead with your number 10? My number 10 is the most recently released game that made my top 10. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, it's uh, I would call it relatively contemporary with modern games. Uh, and in my opinion, I might go so far as to say it's the best version of a game like this ever made, but my number seven game might argue with that. So I'll just say that it's Titanfall two Ooh. Ooh. Titanfall two is like, so Titanfall one came out. It was Xbox one exclusive one. No, it was Xbox three, six. No shit. No, yeah, it was Xbox one. It was Xbox one exclusive. And it was multiplayer only. And they kind of tried to do some immersive storytelling stuff. It was a good enough game. People liked it. With two, they came back and they actually made an actual campaign. And the campaign is impeccable. It's fantastic. Just from from start to finish, it's good storytelling. It's incredibly inventive. There are so many levels in that game where it's just like so rarely is... And this isn't even me dunking on Halo, but Halo is very much like go through corridors and shoot things. It's handled very, very well. They just said, like, we could do that, but what if instead we had, like, incredibly dynamic levels that take advantage of the fact that you're wall running and double jumping and jumping in and out of robots and stuff like that. And it, Titanfall 2 is so good that, like, the end, like, you're welling up and there's tears and then there's a hero moment where a weapon that was conveniently absent from the second game the whole time shows up and then you know why it was absent and just good, Mm. just... Top to bottom, it's a fantastic game. Uh, it's it's impressive both from a development standpoint of what they did, like what they actually like pulled off in the game, like during the section where you're jumping back and forth in, between realities, but also just from feeling good and playing well and being fun, being written well, being a single-player campaign that doesn't wear out its welcome. 
uh, but also doesn't feel kind of like rote and, and done before. So Titanfall 2, fantastic game. One of those games where I could replay that campaign a billion times. Uh, one of my proudest PlayStation trophies has to do with uh, Titanfall 2. So I love me some Titanfall 2. What was that trophy? Uh, so in the beginning of the game, during the tutorial, there's like a little section where you run through and they like, they time everybody. <clears throat> and the top time is like a guy. And you look at the time, you're like, that's impossible. No one could beat that time. And one of the trophies is beat that time. And you have Ooh. to do some very, very tricky, fancy shit. And I sat and gr- like grinded it out and I did it. And I felt like a, like a, like a Ooh. crimson god. Did you stream uh, that? I feel like I watched you get that. I did. Yeah, I yeah. did stream that. Uh, <laughs> like when like PS4 streaming like from the box was like new. Uh, so mm. I, I really, really, I love that game. And I was very proud of that moment. That is one of those games that I know I'm going to love and is like in on my years, rainy day list. When you're like, yeah, yeah it's time. <laughs> 12, yeah, exactly. When I have you all back on to list your new top tens. Uh, Mike, Titanfall 2 is your number 10. Yes. But I sure would love to know, what's your number nine? So my number nine was the hard. Can I say really quick, I did not make a list for Mike or uh-huh. Kristen. I don't think I would have got Kristen's there, but I would have gotten Titanfall 2 for Mike. I think I would have got that. I talked. Jake's heard me talk about that game a lot yeah. of times. <laughs> um, I can't prove it, but I'm I'm going just full honesty. I don't think I would have got Sonic. I think I would have got Titanfall 2. I would have also got Titanfall 2. Jake knows my top 10 for sure. Like, I will not say a single game that Jake's like, oh, okay. Like, he'll, he'll be like, yep, there it is. There it is. There it is. Like, he'll, he knows these. Uh, my number nine uh, was my hardest to choose between, I guess you could say, because um, mm. I know you said I we could do. I guess you could say that. Wait till you hear. Wait till you hear. Yeah, I, I know guess you someone said might say that. Hardest <laughs> decider do. <laughs> yeah, so when I was deciding on the decider do, I had like uh-huh. two games. And uh, I know you said we could do anything we want, but I didn't want to do one of those like, I'm choosing this game to represent an entire series. Like I didn't want to do that. I really wanted to choose the games and I hope nobody did. Yeah, (laughs) me too. (laughs) Uh, And both Starcraft and Starcraft two mean a lot to me as games. Uh, It was very, very hard to choose between them. Uh, I actually did a replay of Starcraft two recently. Mm. um, And it, it, I, I really had a hard time, but I ended up landing on the original StarCraft just because for so many reasons, it was, I would say it was not just a fantastic game, but it was really formative for me as far as my love for RTS games and finding other RTS games and just like, like loving StarCraft, like as a property, like I'm, I've got mm-hmm. like a bunch of StarCraft books. I go to BlizzCon every year. I'm leaving for BlizzCon in like uh, a month and the thing I'm the most excited to do is watch the ESL, which is like the StarCraft live uh, matches and stuff. And uh, StarCraft is like a really, really fantastic. I mean, actually, if you look back behind me, I have a Kerrigan and a Nova StarCraft poster. I just, I love StarCraft. StarCraft's fantastic. Uh, I thought you were going to say it was a StarCraft skateboard behind you. I uh, know. God, I wish. Uh, they did skateboards at BlizzCon a couple of years ago and it was all Warcraft. Uh, I would have, uh, I would have, fucking geeked if they had some starcraft skateboards mm. um but yeah no I, I i i think that it was really important to uh just like rts's in general because so many rts's had kind of they had a really they had a formula and even warcraft followed that formula before starcraft uh age of empires age of empires 2 a lot of them did things very similarly like they, they kind of felt like they had uh like lanes to stay in and starcraft 2 really kind of like went crazy. Like the idea that you had the three uh, different races and all of them were so wildly different. And obviously they ran with this even further in StarCraft 2. But like, it really was like, just from a game design perspective, it's fucking wild how much time must have been spent on something this ambitious when in the past, the difference between anyone in those games was like, oh, well, when you make this warrior... It's 10% stronger. And when you have a guy with a horse, he has eight more uh, hit points or you can gather food uh, 0.6% faster. Like it was, it was these minor little things and you're all kind of like, you're kind of playing checkers. Uh, And this was like, what if you were playing like chess in three matches at the same time against three different opponents? Like they really like Chinese checkers. Yeah. It's like you're playing Chinese checkers. 
Uh, and uh, it's like you're playing Chinese checkers. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad you guys are here. <laughs> I I was gonna like I'm like I'm like I don't know what to say. I don't know what to compare this to. Um, so yeah, I think StarCraft is a really important game for me, and it was the game actually that I had forgotten when me and Kristen did our original ten. That mm. I looked at it and was like, the hell is going on in my brain? Why wasn't StarCraft in the top ten? Um, and so yeah, that's my number nine. Fantastic. Uh, very, very good. Well, Kristen, how about you tell us your number nine? Uh, my number nine is a franchise that I don't think either of these guys like, but I'm going to say it anyway, right in front of them, no matter what they think. It's uh, Pokemon Soul Silver. <laughs> so, Ooh. Yeah. Oh, shut up. <laughs> yeah. Easily uh, could be in, in the place of sil- or silver proper for me, but I but I, I get it. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I, I mean, I love most pokemon game like pretty much any pokemon game i will play it and like it for the most part uh but soul silver for me is my favorite to play to replay just because it's like i and mike knows this about me that i don't like the competitive side of pokemon like i don't like stat training i don't care about my pokemon's nature it's so mad when people talk about evs (laughs) yeah like i'll be like i like this pokemon and they're like it has bad stats i'm like i don't give a shit i don't give a shit <laughs> uh i just like the pokemon that i like and so i think that yeah, soul silver is like the best balance of new mechanics without it being super reliant on like your hidden abilities and things like that uh and like the nostalgia of older pokemon because uh, no offense connor but i don't know when the last time you went back and replayed like silver or even blue well actually you just replayed through blue. I did just like, replay yeah blue. <laughs> so having like that 20 in 20 item inventory maximum is That's like pretty rough. it's yeah. such a nightmare and then like not being able to just like sort your inventory easily <laughs> like there's just so many like little mechanical things when you go back to play the old ones that suck to to go back and replay so soul silver hits that perfect the that perfect note of like you still get the nostalgia hit but you don't have to deal with all of that um and also like the first time playing through i played gold originally and like when you get to the end and then like jake said like this is back when you really didn't know what to expect in games so when you got to the end of gold and then it was like and now you're going back to the kanto region it was like oh (laughs) <laughs> like, that yep. was so cool mm-hmm. um and it is it's still cool to me uh so that's that's why it's my number nine i love that game i mean i just love pokemon so i'd like I had to ruling. put a place in i'd like a ruling from you Kristen. Huh. i put down pokemon g slash s that's what i put down for you does that count i know that's your favorite generation so that's what i what i put i'm gonna say no wow Maybe because we've talked specifically about the about the um the gener- it being the generational bridge. Wow, okay. I'm, c- I'm counting pretty, it no. Pretty unfair of you. Unless, <laughs> unless it's going to make it a 10 out of 10, then I'll give it to you. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Uh, do you have a favorite starter of the three? And that, Cyndaquil, yes. easily. Me yeah. too. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, fantastic. What an amazing game. I see Jake's got a, a Johto poster right behind him. Uh, and I've got, you can't see it, but above me there is an Ecrotic City uh, poster as well so they're very very similar uh, you can see me drawn as a pokemon trainer with my farfetched right there you, you can't see any of my pokemon boy. stuff it's yeah. packed <laughs> <laughs> so. um well thank you Kristen. that wonderful stuff uh jake number nine please my number nine is a fighting game i guess you could consider it a fighting game uh Super Smash Brothers is my number nine. I know that there are better Smash Brothers games. Don't care. Uh, it just was uh, one of the best gaming experiences I feel like in my life. You know, it was a bunch of friends all together in one room on an N64. One person had to have the terrible controller where the stick didn't work <laughs> very well. And, the you know, the bottom place would always rotate out. It felt like there were not only like were people playing the game in certain ways, but you didn't want to be the person to rotate out. So you would literally mid-game, we'd be making alliances with people to like <laughs> save you Dude, when you only had one stock left. Remember Kill the Chew? Of course. Of course I remember Kill the Chew. It was a match where Mike was absolutely dominating. There was no way for anyone else to win, except somehow I convinced everyone to fight Mike. Dude, I had like, it was a five stock match. I had four and all of them were at one, except for Jake was at two. And he fucking lawyered all of them into being like, yeah, you know what? This makes sense. And I I was the first one out of that match. Wow. It just, uh, it was like so amazing. And then I, I feel like, I mean, of course, 
not even I feel like they obviously made something so incredibly special because Smash is such an important game for so many people, whether, mm -hmm. you know, you're, you know, the kind of person who's like, I only play Melee or something like that. But the the gameplay style of Smash is it's beautiful. It feels like something only Nintendo would try to pull off uh, in a weird way. Other people have tried like. It, it's PlayStation and Drake's going to fight Kratos. And it's like, yeah, this sucks. Uh, <laughs> but it feels like Nintendo really kind of understood what they were making with that game. And yeah, I just have so many amazing memories with it. I think most of my list is just like a trip down memory lane. It's not like the new yeah. God of War or something like that, which is a brilliant game. But this me means so much more to me. So Smash Brothers is my number nine. Awesome. I, I remember being a kid and I didn't see advertisements for it. So when I went to my friend's house and he was just like, hey, we have this game. I was like, what? The, you can be Pikachu and fight Donkey Kong? Uh, <laughs> the commercial, too. Do you remember the commercial oh, yeah. for it? They were With all the people, in like the, the, the like big people the in The big costumes. outfits. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I Jake, rented we that so much. This. I got to send Kinda. this to you. Yeah, Jake, you um, really need to see this commercial. <laughs> All yeah, right. I'll text it to you, but it's great. Uh, yeah, okay. original Super Smash uh, Brothers, fantastic game. Uh, Jake, we're going to stay with you, though. Let's get your number eight while we're here. Oh, okay, I was going to look up a commercial, but let's do my number eight. <laughs> Would you have got that one, Mike? Was that oh, on yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, Okay. Because that, that, you and me are <laughs> unique in that we do not like Smash Brothers Melee all that much. Mm -hmm. And we liked other ones after, and but we to us the nostalgia smash is always going to be sixty four. I think it's yeah. I think yeah. Okay, so I, Grandpa. Yeah. Ooh, I do want to know, Jake. Uh, who's your main? Samus. Ooh, Samus. Yeah, it didn't Nailed sound it. like that then. Sorry, but, is someone you know. playing the game right now? <laughs> That's crazy. Turn your TV um, down, Connor. Sorry, Jeez. sorry. Um, yes, uh, my number eight is another game that uh, I feel like I don't have much of this genre at all like in, as like a top well there are a couple games that maybe could have made this list in this genre but i think the one that sticks out the most was probably halo the original halo is the only first person shooter to make my list even though i think there are a few first person shooters that easily could have made my list uh like perfect dark or golden eye or something like that halo was so good that i remember we would literally like we would organize events at people's houses to play Halo. Dude, mm -hmm. there were, when we did those LAN parties with yes. Bootman and Alex, and we were like in two different rooms, yes. and like someone would get a crazy sniper shot, and you'd hear the other room upstairs, like, yeah. And we'd I'm do, sorry, we'd have like, man? Oh, bo <laughs> no, 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 Bootman, uh, Chris Boutte. Come on, come on, come on. Sorry, Chris, hey, I, I know, know that you're guy. listening. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, we'd have like, like t team uh, capture the flag games that would go like an hour and a half. So it was like these grueling, when you score, it's like, we are like frothing at the mouth. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, it was just, it was so exciting. And it was weird because it wasn't too far removed from things like Smash Brothers and GoldenEye Perfect Dark and stuff like that. But it did bring all of that energy back into gaming. It was the, it was a game where I, I cared about it so much that I would even try to do, and I do not remember any of the names of this, but there was like a website you could go on and hook your Xbox up to before Xbox Live was even a thing, and you could try to play Halo online. I I have no idea what it was called, but I remember was it, it was like Halo, Halo IP, right? Well, I don't know. I sure. think it was Halo IP. Yeah, and <laughs> like it was just so crazy good. And also, Halo is like phenomenal. It's weird because it's a launch title. It might be the best launch title of all time it's definitely up there there are a few obviously amazing launch titles for um for consoles but halo might be one of the best launch video games of all time and um it also weirdly enough like i played it with one group of friends and i met an entire other group of friends simply by being good at halo it was like a weird moment i worked at best buy and there were a group of guys who worked there as well but they were a little older than me and, and mike worked for you right no, yeah, was, of course. well, he's always yeah. worked. I got me. fired <laughs> by Jake. Um, uh, and I ended up, they were playing Halo one night and they were like, hey, do you play anything at all? And I went over and I played with them and I was absolutely destroying them. 
Uh, <laughs> and it was how I became friends with this like entirely new friend group of people. I remember one of them on the phone talking to his friend. He's like, Kenny, you got to get over here. This guy from audio is absolutely wrecking us. <laughs> well, I got it. No, I not with a sniper rifle, with a pistol, Kenny. Like I got to was... back Jake up on this because all of us, we had this little tight new group of friends mm -hmm. that would play some of these games so much that we would then like we would dominate each like play each other that the worst person in our group would then go off somewhere and embarrass everybody else because like we all Jake, the worst one in the group because uh, yeah, we, <laughs> we all played so much and so i like i can picture jake doing that because i've seen it happen a hundred times with the mm -hmm. games that we would just like glom onto yep. mm -hmm. and uh so like it's funny that he mentioned that story because i would have like been like well jake you should tell the story like because that that's just a thing that happened all the time yeah and uh so that i mean not only was it a great game i also had amazing times with so many friends through that game and uh yeah halo number eight i, I don't want right? words eight. in your mouth jake but i don't. would i would no i'm gonna i don't want to but i'm gonna do it don't. Uh, <laughs> so i would force him i would say that uh halo is probably if we had to come down to one game that created our kind of like love of just co-op games and like always trying to find a game where it's like, oh yeah, two people can play together, two people can play together, four people can play together. Like not like a multiplayer deathmatch thing, not a golden eye thing, not a like Halo multiplayer, but like co-op games. This game started that and it's like it turned into this thing where Jake and I were looking for any game where we could like, wait, we can just play this whole game together. This is amazing. We were looking for that for like 15 years we would rent games or play games purely because they had that as a feature because of halo yeah that's that's absolutely true halo's co-op was great by the yeah way. i mean it's so good yeah it's how it's how i played uh at least two of the campaigns was co-op with a friend and yeah so great did anybody ever my the way i played it for the first time though uh was, was on one month ago <laughs> was one month ago guys i've it's never great. played halo so check it out if that was the really case, yeah um, i was too busy playing counter-strike like a fucking grown-up of course grown -up. of course <laughs> yeah okay. with your nine I said to five that to make mike mad specifically <laughs> yeah yeah Chris um, is out there spamming tbs for headshots. i got introduced to this game at a land party of a, a birthday party of a friend at the junior high I went to, but it was kids from a different elementary school. I had just made friends with them, so I was the only kid not from their previous school. And it was like at the beginning of junior high that got to go. And I also had never heard of it and was like, this is amazing. And then my parents got it for me for PC that Christmas, and I played it to death. Um, so love this game. Jake, I got to say so far, pal, good list. Hey, thanks. Yeah, you haven't screwed I wasn't up sure yet. how you're gonna feel about it. But um, yeah, I'm glad you like. I also like that every story with a video game, you're like, I went somewhere, I had no idea what was going on. <laughs> well, <laughs> All I of a sudden you. I'm playing a video game. I, I, I wandered in there, but the stars in my eyes, the second I could see anything, I found myself on a ship in the middle of the night. <laughs> that 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 um will continue to be a pattern. Um, Kristen, how about your number eight? Uh, well, first and foremost, nobody asked, but I'm going to share that my Super Smash Brothers main is Captain Falcon. Uh, uh, second of all, my number eight game uh, is not. Re I want to be clear that it's not representing a series. It is this specific game and not the rest of the series. It's Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> I knew you were going to say Kingdom Hearts something. Yeah. Yeah, I like Kingdom Hearts 1 a lot, but I don't think it's aged very well. Um, and then the other ones take or leave, to be perfectly honest. Yeah. Um, but Kingdom Hearts 2, I, to me, it's easily the best in the series. It nails that, like, to me, that action combat, like, and not to dunk on Final Fantasy 16 <laughs> too hard, but I was playing Final Fantasy 16 this year, and, like, that is action combat, an action combat mm -hmm. JRPG, and I don't think they do it very well because they, like, try to be kind of, like, devil make cry but they don't want to alienate their turn-based fans so they don't lean all the way in hmm. and it's like well if you wanted to do that you have kingdom hearts right here <laughs> that already <Yeah. laughs> has like really fun combat in my opinion um where it feel it, like just feels good it's like the right the physics are right um it's also to me like the last kingdom hearts where the worlds that you visit are not just like you go through the motion of the story of the Disney movie. Um, like they actually mm. have their own plots that involve Sora and the gang. Um, it also is like the, the last of the numbered games to actually include final fantasy characters. Mm. Uh, those are a 
thing of the past now, apparently. Um, and so to me, it's just like everything about Kingdom Hearts 2 is why I wanted to play Kingdom Hearts in the first place. I love Disney. I love Final Fantasy. So um, it yeah, I, I just really loved it. And it, I it has like a very special memory to me where I was like super. I don't remember why I was a teenager. So I was like de- super depressed about something. <laughs> like, I don't remember <laughs> what, but I just remember that I was like, de- I was apparently depressed. And my dad comes into my room and he's like, what's wrong with you? And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and he's like, do you want that new game? The new Disney game? <laughs> and I was like well that's not what's wrong with me but yeah <laughs> he took me to circuit city and we went and got kingdom hearts 2 and then Aww. uh it cured my depression all better now <laughs> wow congrats great, great i swear i'm not instinct. that sad of a person i feel like i've only shared sad stories yeah. this, this episode uh, uh, i want to point out so far all three of your games are sequels are like the number oh, yeah. two in a series hmm. um and then i want to ask do you own a keyblade i do own a keyblade keychain but not a full-size keyblade now it's okay, on the cool. list gotcha um, i want we'll an oblivion and... yeah uh did i assume that's a cool keyblade it is it's a cool <laughs> it's a cool one awesome uh number eight for Kristen, kingdom hearts 2 mike i'd like to know yours uh first two observations four for four if we count Kristen, only if i get to 10 <laughs> okay cool okay. um also Remember when you said this was going to be an hour and 45 minutes and I laughed? We're at 52 minutes, yeah. yeah. That's mm-hmm. why, right now. But I'm, I I technically can stay until, yeah, we won't go over it, but I've got more time than allotted, so. All right, cool. So what are we at? Eight? Number eight. Number eight is, uh, let me see. Yeah, it's another sequel. Um, I think that if people chose the same series that I'm about to talk, they would choose number two. But I am choosing. Oh three. no! Yes. Come on. Why? You know what do you mean? Why? <laughs> you know why? Uh, I'm doing Mass Effect three. Sure what? Is. Yeah. <laughs> sure he is. Mass Effect three. Uh, <laughs> I don't even hate that game, but it is a wild choice over two. Uh, Mass Effect two doesn't have Mass Effect 3's multiplayer, which is yeah maybe the best multiplayer ever made. Like in my like my opinion, is my favorite thing. I have an Xbox Series X that I have more hours right. of. Uh, not to <laughs> brag or anything. Uh, I have more hours of Mass Effect 3 multiplayer on the Series X than I do any Series wow. X video games. Uh, my Xbox <laughs> One, I bought. Nothing came out on that fucking thing. The Xbox One was a pile of trash. I exclusively cooked it, c- kept it hooked up to my TV to play Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. To this day, you can go on right now, and the servers are still up for Mass Effect 3 multiplayer. Um, the bi- the worst thing about Thank that God. legend legendary <laughs> legendary Please collection <laughs> uh, was that they I didn't... bet they forgot. <laughs> <laughs> no, there's, you can get into matches immediately. It's full immediate. It's so good. Uh, Mass Effect Three multiplayer. Uh, obviously, I like the Mass Effect series a lot. Um, two kind of missed me. I didn't really like what they were doing there with any of the combat, but they kind of figured it out in two. And then three has the best combat in my opinion. Slightly worse story. And obviously, it's closing a trilogy, so uh, the initial version had some stumbles. They went in and changed a bunch of stuff. Uh, one of the DLC packs is probably one of the best DLC I've like ever played in a game. Uh, the, the <laughs> you reunion. don't like that one, Jake? Huh? That DLC is fun. No, no, I'm just listening to one of the craziest <laughs> apologists for Mass Effect 3's <laughs> story I've ever heard. Sorry, you know what? It had some rough edges, uh, but no, they no. really got in there. It had a lot of. Oh, it had a lot out. of. It had a lot of great <laughs> stuff in there. People, two is amazing, and so people act like three is like this humongous fall off a cliff. It is not. It's, in my opinion, the single player for three is like an eight. The single player for Mass Effect two is a ten. But Mass Effect 3 has the multiplayer, and it's, again, it's a top three multiplayer of all time for me, and that edges it up. I think Mass Effect 3 is a fantastic game. Heavy Melee is one of the most satisfying things you can do in a video game, bar none. Mass Effect 3's Heavy Melee is just, it's, it feels, it's like, it makes me go like this. It makes me go, Mwah. Every time I'm playing the game, oh, I, end up di- I end up dying, and it takes forever to beat every game, because every time I use it, I'm constantly using it. I have to take my hand off the controller and go, Mwah. It takes forever. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, I got it's a chef's stick kiss on my for fingers. The, for the listeners at home, Mike has to do a chef's kiss yeah. every time. So Mass Effect. That. What's that? Mass Effect. Uh, <laughs> it's this, Jake. It's a chef's kiss? Yeah. <laughs> I learned it from a chef. A chef taught me how to do it. Chefs right. famously don't kiss other people, just their own hands. Yeah. 
Uh, Even Remy. Yeah. I feel like I have heard this. Yeah. That's why we say thank you, Chef, so much, because they're going through a lot. Um, so Mike, that's my number eight. That is my number you, eight game. Absolute maniac. I am so proud of you. Thank you. Um, uh, and hey, I'm thinking about playing Mass Effect 2 next year. So, Interesting. Uh, yeah, the, you know that new game. The Legendary Collection's fantastic. It fixed yes. one. You and, convinced me to get it. Yeah. Well, And, and I loved the, one. The fact that you loved one, dude, get ready, bro. Get yeah. ready. Yeah. You're, yeah. It's insane that you didn't just like immediately jump into two and three, but you were going to like, it's going to change your life when you play Mass Effect Ooh. 2. Can't wait. Um, let's stay right here with you, pal, and go for your number seven. Uh, my number seven is the game I alluded to back when I talked uh, about number 10 being probably like the best campaign I've ever played. Uh, this is, in my opinion, the best single player campaign, uh, in a, at least in a shooter, but just kind of in general. And that is Half-Life 2. Half-Life 2 is, it's like, it's like an all-timer, you know? Not just because it's on my top 10 list, but it's just like, it's one of those like, it's one of those games. The the Final Fantasy Sevens, the Ocarinas of Time, the Chrono Triggers. Like there are these games that like everyone just kind of agrees are like a big ass deal. Half Life Two is one of those. Um, it pro- it, I mean, I think a lot of people would probably say it's like a perfect game. Yes, like you it, know, it, it get put. It would be it would be in those conversations. Like if a if someone had to go like not just my list, I'm making a top ten list of games of all time. It'd be one of those games where, like, even in a world where there's so many games that have to make a list, it mm-hmm. would still be like, well, it has to, has to make the list. Like, mm-hmm. Half-Life 2 is a big deal. It's important, both, like, historically and how it moved tech forward. Um, it is the reason Steam exists right now. Like, Steam was kind of a joke that people didn't like when it first came out. People were annoyed by it. As a CS 1.6 beta player, I can confirm that. Yes. Uh, (laughs) And uh, Half-Life 2 exclusively coming to Steam and also being this transcendent experience uh, popularized Steam. It popularized physics in-game. It popularized environmental storytelling. It popularized uh, games that have essentially the no-cut approach to games where... Mm-hmm. You're in the game. You're not like watching cutscenes. You're not skipping through things. They try to where load screens are a seven second load stop. There's no like jumping from level to level. Like it did so many things that like you would argue that Half Life was just as important, and then it somehow did all those things better and bigger, and in a way that almost like almost makes you forget about how important the first Half Life was as well. It's it's kind of nuts. But uh, Half-Life 2 is pretty amazing. I was definitely one of those where's Half-Life 3 guys for like a very, very long time. I bought into all the rumors, uh, all, all those things. Uh, it's it's a bummer that it ended in the cliffhanger it did because like Valve is just a weird black box with like how they make things and when they decide to get behind something and having to champion a team that's a level. There's no roles there. It's just like, it's hard to get anything done. So I get it. I'm, I've accepted that I'll never get another real half-life game. Um, he's given up hope. It's, it's, it's fine. He's calling Alex, not a real half-life. Well, game. it's that, that's a VR game, you know, like it's, and it's a prequel, right? So it's like, it's, it's kind of different. It's kind of like a side game. Um, you're so a coward. I, the rest of us <laughs> still believe in that genre. <laughs> <laughs> no, that, that series. So Absolute yeah, I, coward. I, One of my favorite games of all time. I, yeah, right. I had, you know, it's like if you love something, set it free. And if it, if I can't it, argue and that. And if I can't it's real, argue that. I'm back on board. Yeah. And if it's real, <laughs> come on back. Uh, so, That's right. yeah. Half Life, Half Life Two is it, it is a, it is a very like even though it's seven on my list. I, I, it's one I would, heart. it has like the, the impact of a higher number just because of how important it is. So yeah, that's yes. my number seven. Wow. Uh, very, very well done. Um, can't wait to play it myself next <laughs> year. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I did genuinely just buy it for 99 cents on steam cause it was on a sale. Uh, yeah. so. guess what? They've also given it away for free a thousand times. That's yeah, how- no, no one ever has played a game they bought on steam. That was cheap. I have like 80 games. I've never played. <laughs> You're never going to play that orange box. Connor. Oh, I have the orange box on PS3. So you've already got the game, <laughs> but I want to play it on the PC. Uh, Kristen, let's get your number seven. <laughs> 
man. My number seven uh, is Fallout New Vegas. Uh, I, yeah, I used to play Fallout 1 and 2 um, on the PC. I was too dumb and little to like get very far in them, but I played like the first five hours over and over <laughs> on them. Um, and Fallout New Vegas is, to me, like of all the current generation uh, Fallouts, the best at like capturing the spirit of fallout one and two like the like just the just the vibe the lore like it is way more what i remember those games being than i still like three um but it it's it's just a little little different there it's interpretation of the fallout like lore and everything um also fallout new vegas i'm from las vegas so super exciting to be like oh that's a place i've been <laughs> like fucking <laughs> and they did their research like bonnie springs like what a fucking local call out to be like <laughs> you're at bonnie springs um and then Fremont it also came out street, on my birthday what a local call out <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah only the locals know Fremont street. yeah <laughs> <laughs> both strips are in one game <laughs> the baby from <laughs> honey i blew up the baby <laughs> <laughs> uh, that uh yeah so yeah it also came out on my birthday so i, I, like that. I don't know if that's a thing that's in there or not <laughs> <laughs> i wish it, it was. feels like it's something you could just make up <laughs> i did uh, i'm was, sorry came out on uh, your birthday yeah came out on my birthday so oh, happy it was like birthday. They, thank you it's like they made it for me um but yeah i i'll replay fallout new vegas over and over and over and i i people will complain a lot about like the side quests in modern fallout games. And I think that the new Vegas side quests are actually interesting. And, mm. uh, and that again, it might just be because I am from Vegas, but like when you go, you there's like Mount Charleston and you go up and that, like the super, the intelligent super mutants live up there. Like that's so fucking cool to me. Like I don't Walk know. Into I Boulder just, city. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I just think everything about it is so cool. Um, and I mean, Fallout mechanics are going to be Fallout mechanics as far as gameplay and stuff. I I will. The one nice thing I'll say about Fallout 4 is that it improves game like gunplay. Uh, but other than that, that Jake disagrees. <laughs> no, I just I, Fallout 4. I yeah, Fallout 4 really did not like that game. At I didn't all. either. I was it, so it, disappointed. It's it, weird that it took New like, Vegas. I feel like is widely considered like of this era of Fallout games the best Fallout. It's, it's not even made. Maybe? Yeah, it's Obsidian, I know. Yeah, it's so weird. Not yeah. yeah, but no, that's I agree. Like Fallout 4 was such a letdown, and then mm. they put out Fallout 76 and like Which I, I love. <laughs> <laughs> all, me and Jake play Fallout 76 all the time. Uh join our clan. Uh but no, I just Please, I, no one's in our clan. <laughs> nobody plays. <laughs> They're all busy playing Mass Effect 3 multiplayer instead. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, the um <laughs> It's a, it's just I don't know I really love Fallout New Vegas it nice. I, I I play it every few years uh that Wild West the or like the the weird Wild West perk so fun you have just weird shit happen to you out in the middle of the desert <laughs> that's desert living baby that's real life yeah we got that perk in real life baby <laughs> every time you're on Fremont Street you got that perk yeah you're always <laughs> running into fridges with weird bodies in them here in Las Vegas. Anyways, <laughs> somebody, let's see what Jake's number seven is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jake, what's your number seven? My number seven is a video game uh, popularized by a pro skater. This <gasps> is Tony Hawk's pro skater number two. Oh, Ooh. so you chose the right number. I did. I chose the correct right, number. Where, where Connor chose like the three, wrong Connor. number. Thank you, Chris. No, you should have seen me and Jake's faces. I know that. I don't I know if he was see, looking at me. I was here. <laughs> we both we shared a we shared a look when you said three, Connor. <laughs> to be fair, look, Jake did that is every great. pick I had. I, I love. <laughs> no, no, your picks were great. Uh, I can't wait until you play more video games in five years. Um, but I I love three. By the way, I think in some ways, like. Two has more of a place in my heart, but I do. I played so much three. Yeah. It was unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Three yeah. was so freaking good. But yeah, Tony Hawk 2. Um, I For whatever reason, Tony for Hawk 2. the GBA, won. right? What's that? Yeah. It's for the GBA. For the That's GBA? That's the one you're referring to? No, of course not. <laughs> Why was I playing for the GBA? I'm kidding, but it is pretty freaking good. <laughs> so I wasn't, I wasn't playing on the GBA. Uh, and... Um, I think for whatever reason, Tony Hawk won. Uh, it was good, but the manual changed Tony Hawk for me. So one was good, but I just didn't, I don't know. I didn't connect that hard with the lines and stuff like that in one. And then in two, 
when they put in the manual, it just felt like, oh, now this game is completely open. How did me. it like, not have it all along? Like, it felt yeah. like mm -hmm. it's it's this missing puzzle piece, right? With, yeah, without question. And then I remember, I mean, you know, Mike talking earlier about us being good at games. Like, we went and played in a Tony Hawk tournament, like a Tony Hawk skate tournament. And I remember winning a Tony Hawk skate tournament because we literally played these games so much. We actually really like grinded against each other. I you guess did pun, what? pun intended. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, we got really, really good at it. I love Tony Hawk. I loved the re-release too. I thought that oh, was a so so perfect game. So uh, Tony Hawk is just the best. And it's weird because I couldn't really love one back in the day. Like Mike was mm -hmm. so good at one and I just couldn't really get the hang of it. And then two, something about the manual just changed the game for me. And of course, this game not only was an amazing game, but like a lot of kids around that time, I we all started skateboarding yep. in mm -hmm. real life because of this video game. It was yes. that it was that impactful. Mm -hmm. Like Tony Hawk, the video game is probably the biggest thing to ever happen in real life skateboarding. Yeah, I, I think that's yeah. probably yeah. Uh -huh. true. I'm 37 and I have a room full of skateboards and skate to this day because of Tony Hawk's Pro Skater. Like that, yeah. that is like it's. It, so many games cannot say they've left an impact on someone like that. Yeah, it literally, it's one of those, it, like people went out to do the thing inside of a video game. It's yes. so it's so crazy. And it kind <laughs> of, yeah, it's now the reason today, like someone could show me a skateboard trick or something like that, and I, I'm stoked. But may, maybe if I never saw Tony Hawk, I would just be like, I don't know, it's just like another one of those things when someone shows you do something crazy, you're like, okay. Take totally. a little kid, like, look at my somersault. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Jake, I'd love to know, do you have a favorite um, uh, stage and character? I think the school is probably my favorite stage. Is it school two? I school can't two. Remember. Yeah, it's school, school two, right? School two. Um, I think school two is probably my favorite stage. And then character's really hard. I would probably say Rodney Mullen just because I love Rodney Mullen. Yeah. Mm. Um, but I mean, there are so many good ones. It's weird because, like, yeah, now I'm thinking like I know all these skateboarders because yes. I would play them inside of Tony Hawk. Ooh, I have a uh, fun uh, story, which is for a while, Jake. I'm sure you had been to the restaurant Home State at a certain point in your life. In... Probably. Have you ever been to the breakfast taco place by the clubhouse? Uh, yeah. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Um. Well, anyway, uh, I worked there for about a year. Uh, like, uh, and I actually just. The, like 2021, I worked there for a year and, uh, who would come in there was Eric Costin. And I saw no his name way. on an order. Whoa, really? He would come in all the time. And the first time I saw his name, I was like, there's no way this is going to be the Eric yeah. Costin. And he walks in and I was and just he like, walks holy in, shit, nobody knows Costin. who he is. <laughs> <Except> <laughs> me. He and was, goes I, inside and does the cleanest crook you've ever seen in your life. Dude, he all, he grinds on the bar to get to his food. Uh, no, he was always so nice. So get out cool. of here, Eric Costin. Yeah. Stop yeah. going in. Ruining my restaurant, Eric Costin. <laughs> uh, never said anything to him, but he was always uh, really nice and patient even when we were busy. So, uh, yeah, Tony Hawk too. Um, fantastic. I feel like that modernized, uh, the series, like, like fine, mm -hmm. like it all one, like you said, was great, but two really set the path forward. Um, Jake, let's get your number six. Uh, my number six, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 for the Game Boy Advance. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's awesome. I've no, got it right Connor, here. We, me and Jake both played that game a bunch. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, my number my number six game is going to be a Pokemon game. It's very hard to choose which game. I feel like uh, it's it's hard not to pick the game that started it all off for me. You know, Pokemon Red Blue. But I do think, as we talked about earlier, the moment of the game sending you back to Kanto uh, in Silver was just. It really was mind-blowing for me as a kid and also we had so much fun with both like from i feel like from blue all the way through silver we as a friend group were playing pokemon we were playing it constantly so i think either way to go would be great for for me it was definitely pokemon silver i didn't really play soul silver heart gold so i have to stick with the bad version of these games but it was uh <laughs> I, I feel like I have a billion Pokemon stories. I don't even really know where to begin. I think a lot of people probably, um, I was about to say my age, but honestly, within like 15 years of my age, probably have a million Pokemon stories. It's just such an important franchise in gaming, and it was such an important 
game for me. I, I love I love Pokemon. I love the Pokemon games. Uh, I don't feel like I've connected with a main series game as hard ever since, but I mean, there's still been ones that I've loved like black mm-hmm. and white and uh, X and Y and stuff. But yeah, uh, Pokemon silver is just, uh, it was perfect. It was so good. Nice. Uh, I thinking about it, like, is that game the reason that like our generation so nostalgic? Cause we all had a dose of nostalgia like from the second game we played, we were like, I remember Kanto. Mm. <laughs> That's pretty, it's interesting that I didn't even think about it as like hitting us with nostalgia, but you're right. I, I felt like I had the same reaction as Kristen almost where it's like, I didn't even know. I, I didn't know they could do that. Like, yeah. whoa, you're going to do, you're going to bring that whole game in here. That's yeah. massive. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Uh, favorite, favorite starter. I think it also is probably Cyndaquil, even mm-hmm. though I'm not a big fire starter guy. I think it is probably Cyndaquil. What well, well, it's, it's, it's Chikorita, Cyndaquil, and Totodile, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. I think it's probably Cyndaquil. Yeah. Um, I like I like those three. They're fun. Uh, all right, Kristen, number six. Uh, my number six is the first Final Fantasy that I ever played, Final Fantasy VII. Um, oh. Yeah, I, I really like... I mean, I like Final Fantasy in general. I've played... Card, Almost all of the. Oh my god! Check this one out. <laughs> Never <laughs> heard of it. Cool. <laughs> uh, I've played almost every mainline Final Fantasy, but at this point, I'm missing like maybe three. Um, but including uh, Dirge of Cerberus. <laughs> no, yeah, I did play Dirge of Cerberus. <laughs> uh, that's you know what? Here's my dedication to my love of Final Fantasy VII. I've played Dirge of Cerberus. I, I sh- am... sorry, I shouldn't have mentioned it. it's probably on your list to come. So sorry. <laughs> yes, yeah, thank you for spoiling my number one. Uh, I played Dirge of Cerberus. I played Crisis Core. Now I've read uh, the fucking books. I have one more book to read. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, we're just showing <laughs> showing things this is no fair they're showing off like their memorabilia but all mine's packed for a move yeah uh, that's not fair i'm sorry i have so many cool things to show but yeah final fantasy 7 uh i it was like one of the games that everybody on my on my i'm sorry it. For, the, for, the, for the audio only listeners, we keep showing more and more ridiculous stuff, including an empty cable box uh, for like an Elgato gear. Mike's showing us the dustiest virtual boy I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah. Richard Scary uh, toy from Kristen. Whoa, that is actually very dirty. All for me. <laughs> this started because I dirty. showed a Cloud Strife uh, figure, uh, and 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 this all cascaded. But Kristen, please go. Ahead. I do. I have those figures. <laughs> They're cool. Uh, but yeah, it was the first like Final Fantasy I got into. My f- neighborhood friends that I played Pokemon with and stuff, um, they would they played them, and I didn't have a PlayStation. So uh, when I got a PS2, um, I remember that was another thing where like my dad like went across town to a fucking game my crazy. Daughter's yeah. Sad, yeah. <laughs> yeah, my sad daughter needs a she's, game. <laughs> she's in there listening to Adam's song. Better buy her a <laughs> video <laughs> game. <laughs> 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 uh, my sad daughter needs this game. But it was like one of those things where like, what do you want for your birthday? And all I would say was Final Fantasy 7. And so he went to some game crazy across town and found me a copy, a used copy of Final Fantasy 7 um, that I still have to this day. Wow. Uh, and I played the hell out of it and it's like when you were younger you had all that all the time and you only had a few games so like i did all the side stuff like bred my gold chocobos i beat like ruby weapon you know i don't think i beat the other one but um i don't know it just says i don't think it's necessarily like the best final fantasy um and i agree I, <laughs> yeah, yeah i agree as well, <laughs> no, well brave it's, am- you guys. it's amazing it's amazing <laughs> don't get me wrong like i Outside of the story, because I think the story is kind of bananas at points. Yeah. Like I understand why it's such a massive Final Fantasy. Like it is the Final Fantasy, whether it's your favorite or not. It is the Final Fantasy game. Yeah, and here's the cursed thing: is that now that I've played all of this side content and watched all these movies and read all these books, is the story. I'm like, well, actually, the story is not that uh, crazy because <laughs> if you think about the fucking uh, underground Shinra that's happening, um, and that is the power that this game has over me is that it's made me fucking Final Fantasy seven pill. Uh, where I've read all this insane <laughs> extended universe stuff so that, uh, so that I could be ready for the remakes. Uh, and I'm so fucking excited for Rebirth. Like, Me too. So excited. Yeah, Mr. Dolphin sure. in HD. That's a that's a chef's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, Jake, you learned it. Uh, 
so yeah happy birthday <laughs> thanks <laughs> <laughs> uh fantastic final fantasy 7 yeah like it popularized like this the genre in the west sort of or like at least the are series. you are you drunk <laughs> well i know that there were other, it, the other super ones. the super nintendo games even if you're not a super nintendo person they popularized the final fantasy but, but i think i, I like think there's it, an argument i think it that, made a what are you a fucking tweaking audience? man <laughs> <laughs> you hide your mind i think i they, think it brought it to a broader audience in the same Jesus. way of like halo where like everybody played halo. if you talk to some fucking bro he played halo mm. and he also played final fantasy 7 like but mm -hmm. he didn't play fucking chrono know. trigger <laughs> like <laughs> crack or something yeah are you Kristen, <laughs> <laughs> that is an amazing uh, number six you know it would have been a little more poetic if it was your number seven but you know it's your number six so what are we gonna do mike Sorry. i want to hear your number six my number six is another super nintendo rpg uh, I got a lot of those on my on my list. I got a lot of Super Nintendo RPGs on my list. Uh, actually, I guess it's the first one that I've named so far. It is Lufia 2. Now, this is Ooh. one of the, like, probably the lesser brought up, like, second tier list of Super Nintendo RPGs. Because there's tons of popular ones. And you'd say, like, the Final Fantasies, Chrono Trigger, Secret of Mana, stuff like that is, like, kind of the first tier. Second tier is stuff like maybe Secret of Evermore and uh, like Act Razor and then stuff like Lufia and Lufia 2. Um, I'd say Lu Lufia 2 popularized JRPGs in America. Yeah. Yeah. See, it's Connor. Now you see where I was going with earlier. This is what popularized JRPGs in America. Lufia 2. The second <laughs> Lufia. I'm on drugs. What can I say? Yeah. So Lufia 2 is fantastic because um, it's very different than a lot of the other Super Nintendo RPGs. It does it like it doesn't follow any of the rules if if that makes sense it's a real bad boy of super nintendo rpgs where like a lot of them were formulaic in a lot of ways that you would expect uh and not even in bad ways just like formulas exist because they're tried and true and people expect them and stuff and like in a lot of ways lufia 2 kind of breaks molds very very early on in that like it has characters that are like controlled characters that are part of your party get killed off. It has characters that are like, oh, it's me, the main character, and here's the girl, and we have an unrequited love. But then at some point in time, she's just out of the picture, and then you marry someone else. And you're like, wait, what? <laughs> it has time skips, like huge time skips. It's got like, like you'll play the game, and the first like 10 hours would be any other JRPG, because then it goes like, the end like that that would be the end but then it's like time skip uh oh shit's back here's people that have aged this is what what they've been up to over time like all sorts of weird stuff like that it also really influenced the uh wild arms series later on the playstation which obviously that's like forward thinking but it was a game that even though it, again it doesn't get brought up as often as some of the final fantasy and uh, square and enix games it was influential later on to other series that became like big deals on their own platforms. Mm. Uh, and it just, it kind of does a lot of stuff very differently. Uh, it's harder to find. So it's not like one of those games where you're going to find like tons of like remakes or a version on the Game Boy Advance and stuff like that. And it's also notable that the first Lufia was pretty average um, and very different than Lufia 2. And then the other Lufia games afterwards were all incredibly different. Um, so it kind of is, it's not like it's a part of a great series. There's plenty of games in it, but it's kind of like the standout uh, within the series. Mm. Um, but I love it. I'm actually replaying it. That's another game. I have a, um, I have one of those Ann Barrick like emulator, uh, yeah. like, like handhelds. And uh, I brought with me for my Orlando trip and I was playing that on the plane as well. And I am uh, still super impressed with how ahead of the game they were with interesting story choices and character choices that you just didn't see until like people always talk about the idea of Ares dying in FF7 as being this crazy thing and it's like Lufia 2 did that and it uh, like obviously like it did it with a main playable character too like not the, the idea of death wasn't brand new but like Lufia 2 did a lot of super progressive things that you wouldn't see in other games that are story based till way later and it doesn't really get talked about anywhere near as much as I think it deserves to be talked about mm. so it is my number six Hmm. Now, is that thing you just said about Final Fantasy VII, if I want to play that, like, should I remember what you just said or forget it? 
remember. Oh yeah, wait. If you really, I, I, now I can't keep track of what you have and haven't played. No, Connor, I have played because I have, you're a I have. you're a psychopath. <laughs> uh, Lufia two, Mike. Uh, you know the second uh sequel, the third sequel on your on your list of your of five games, and one of them you also have a th- uh the third in trilogy. I would love to know your number five. Every game on my list is a sequel except for two. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and one of them is the game I'm about to talk about. It is one of the most important games to me in my life. It is the reason I am friends with Jake Sprague. Uh, it is Pokemon Blue. Luffy, oh. Uh, Luffy <laughs> 3. <laughs> oh my God, you're the only other person who likes Luffy 3? <laughs> um, uh, Pokemon Blue, well, Pokemon games in general are very important to me. They're, it's one of my favorite franchises of all time. It's kind of one of the reasons why I'm really bummed out with the direction of the games since they've... Um, left handhelds uh and but like i really really love (laughs) uh pokemon games and this is another one of those situations where i was like do i choose a game that represents a series or do i choose a game within series and this is where i kind of split the difference because i do think that the originals are still some of the best in the series i think i agree with Kristen that it's the inventory is the hardest thing about the first game. It really is the hardest part of the first game to go back to. And I, other than that, I'm shocked how well it's aged. I've replayed that game multiple times. It put on the 3ds virtual console. Uh, uh, obviously like I would actually go so far as to say that going back and trying them, I think fire red and leaf green, even though they add stuff and modernize them, I think they kind of lose a little bit of the magic and the, the, the translation and I think I would still prefer Red and Blue, like, proper originally <coughs> to the remakes. I, I really, really love Red and Blue. And again, like, the only reason Jake and I are friends, maybe it would have happened otherwise, but it was like, we rode the same bus, I recognized him from one of my classes, and I was playing Pokemon Blue a bunch, and it got us talking. Mm-hmm. And that is literally not, this is not one of those, like, this is how I met your mother, kids, and it's like, a version of it that is literally how we became friends is we'd never, we'd been riding the same bus for weeks, but we had never talked to each other until I was playing that game. And he kind of like asked me about it. And that is why to this day we are still friends. It's like, I can't believe your parents let you bring your game boy to school. Game boy pocket, baby. They don't know anything about it. (laughs) My parents were like, that's expensive. It stays at home. (laughs) Oh yeah. No, my game boy pocket was incredibly old. I had had it since I was in like elementary school. So it was like a real piece of shit. Uh, so it's like that. And I think I got it for like 89 bucks at the time, even when I had it, but yeah, Pokemon blue Pokemon, the original Pokemon games are still really, really fantastic. Uh, I don't think that red and blue is my favorite in the franchise, but it is definitely top three and it's the most important. And so I think that's why it made the most sense to be on the list. Mm. Uh, do you think that you, do you like the, the theory that you actually killed your rivals radicate? No, no. You know what theory I like? The theory mm. I came up with, <laughs> Connor, <laughs> it is that there is only one real Pokemon that actually exists in real life, and that is Porygon, because Porygon is inherently a digital Pokemon, and in the games he's digital, and in real life he's digital. Meaning, I see Porygon actually exists. He is the only real Pokemon. How he should be charged for, for those seizures he gave children. Yeah. How about that for a theory, Kristen Thorson? <laughs> what about Goldango or whatever? Yeah, what about Golden Go? <laughs> He's real. <laughs> what about Pika Blue? <laughs> uh, fantastic Pokemon Blue. Uh, I, I mean, I think about you two when I think about this game because when Jake came <laughs> on this show on episode five or whatever, he talked about you a mm-hmm. bunch, and and uh, here Weird. we are. Whoa, Pokemon Blue is how I started my friendship with Jake, and weirdly enough, it's also how I started Kinda. my friendship with Connor. Yeah. yeah. Because I just didn't play it until the year 2019. Um, uh, Kristen, let's hear your number five. My number five is Stardew Valley. Um, yeah, I love Stardew Valley. I can play that game over and over and over and over. <laughs> um, oh yeah. I think I have like I think I have like seven or six. To You're among hours friends, Kristen. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, uh, yeah, I'll play the hell out of Stardew Valley. I'm How many playing, platforms do you own it on? Two, only two. Still, uh, but you that yeah. means you own. Uh, uh, you own it on more than one platform, and that yeah. is a that is a strong uh, sentiment. Yeah. yeah, I have like I just checked. I have like 450 hours on Steam, which means I probably have like 500 hours total. Uh, but for me, like no other farming simulator ever is like 
I'll try to get into another farming simulator or something now, like or like a just like a life type simulator. And like it, they all just make me want to play Stardew mm-hmm. Valley instead. Yeah. It, I don't know what it is. It's like the combination of the music, the graphics, the sound effect, like the sound effects are so good. Like even when you like pick up a little item, it's like that little pop, like mm-hmm. everything about it is just so addicting and well balanced that you like every like I said, everything just makes me be like, I wish this worked like how it works in Stardew. Uh, <laughs> Each season, the music yeah. is like it's impossible to imagine different music playing for that season because of how perfect it is. It's mm-hmm. also it's in, it's crazy that like one guy like I know now he has some help, but for the most part, like Concerned Eight made that whole game and the music. And he still just updates it. Like yeah, he, right yeah. now, he has another update that he was like, "It's gonna be small," and then he, "That's gonna not be small." <laughs> and it's like a twenty dollars game. And he, it's how many years later, and he's still releasing good content patches for it and bug fixing it and stuff. Like it's, I, it's the best value you can get for any game, except for maybe Vampire Survivors. I would say, like, it the, casts such a long shadow because, like you said, every game of that genre, it's impossible not to compare to Stardew, and it usually compares unfavorably yeah like mm-hmm. even i got like one of the story of seasons like the harvest moon remake ones like and i'm like i need to start playing it but then i'm like hmm, but i could just play sturdy <laughs> <instead." laughs> uh, yeah. so yeah it, it's i don't know it's it's just so good and i feel like it's a universal game too like everybody yeah. loves stardew mm-hmm. yeah, i think that's another one like half-life 2 that if you made a list of like best games ever it would be on the list mm-hmm are you excited for the great chocolatier or whatever it's the haunted chocolatier? The haunted I mean, chocolatier? I'm excited for it, but I don't think it's ever going to come out. I think yeah. him, <laughs> him doing this 1.6 update content update for Stardew is like procrastinating the mm-hmm. haunted chocolatier. So yeah, uh, we'll see, but Dang. I'll get it for sure. Awesome. Uh, well, thank you for your number five Stardew Valley. Jake, let's hear yours. My number it's five. Is that what I'm on? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. My number five is, Dragon Age Origins. Ooh. Dragon Age is a terrible series of video games. <laughs> and I hate it so much. Um, except for one, Dragon Age Origins. Dragon Age Origins was Bioware trying to like go back to sort of like some RPG roots before they were fully taken over by action RPG and stuff like that. And uh, they absolutely they made like such a perfect beautiful more modern role-playing game but it still had all like kind of the there's something about like an old school min maxi role rpg that kind of feels like D in some ways it's like it's sort of janky you're kind of like trying to like cheese the mechanics of it you want to like restart the game because you picked one of the wrong skills or something like that it's that kind of rpg and they absolutely crushed it it's also one of those games that is not afraid to like mess with its characters at all it's like yeah this person can die you're gonna die like everyone you're a gray warden your whole story is that you have to go somewhere and die there's all this um There are all these decisions that they made in Dragon Age because they weren't afraid. They're not afraid. They're not. They weren't worried it was going to be a series or any of that. They just made all of these cool decisions inside of this RPG. Uh, And uh, I loved it. I loved it so much. Uh, And it makes me hate the other Dragon Age games because they they failed so miserably. It's like a reverse Mass Effect where Mass Effect 1 was like, "Oh, this is kind of okay," and then they made an amazing series. Dragon Age was like, "Wow, they have this amazing game," and then they made the worst series possible <laughs> with it. It feels like every single Dragon Age, maybe 3 was better than 2, but who cares? But every single Dragon Age, they just kept making worse and worse and worse decisions, uh, which is unfortunate, but Dragon Age Origins is so good. So good. I love it. Wow. I love it. Uh, Well, you know, you're talking about your number five, but what about number four? My number four was just talked about. It's Stardew Valley. Oh. Stardew Valley is one of the best video games ever made. And it's weird because Stardew Valley is a copy of another game. Like it is truly, (laughs) it's, it's, I don't know. I don't know what exactly this is. Sometimes things are just perfect. Like you'll just, you'll see a movie and for some reason every line is quotable and you'll see another movie and you forget about it immediately. I don't know what it is. There's some things that are just kind of magic and Stardew Valley feels like in that, for that genre, for that game, a a better game will never be made. Uh, It's, 
It's exactly what that game is supposed to be. So much so that people who are trying to make updated versions of Harvest Moon, they don't even... Like, it's weird because you can see from Stardew Valley that they don't get it. Mm -hmm. They don't get what is so good about this kind of game, this this genre. And, uh, yeah, it's... I think everyone feels this way after they played Stardew, but it's a it's an absolute masterpiece of a video game, and I've spent a million hours with it. I have it on every console. I have it on, like, a phone. I have it on a Switch and a PlayStation. Like, I have it on every single thing that you could have it on. I would sit down with my wife, and we would just build a farm together. Mike and I have a farm together that we would build. Um, when my wife and I were doing it, literally it was just me playing, and we were both, you know... <clears throat> focused on what was happening inside the game it's it's truly i don't know i can't think of a single thing wrong with it it's a it's a masterpiece of a video game Fantastic. i will say really quick it's my number 11 it's not going to come up but now that mm. you've both said it that's how close it is to my top 10 and so we're you're this is a real stardew valley uh love fest of a room yeah uh, you, and i you, so what you said jake i'm almost positive i've heard the guy give an interview saying that he loved harvest moon mm-hmm. and felt like it it kind of lost its way and he never felt the same about old, like the newer star- Harvest Moons as he did about the old ones. So he just decided he'd do it himself. And it's like fun to hear someone say that and then create the perfect, yeah. like yeah. literally they, he could not have been more successful at doing that exact thing. I guess I got to make my own Dragon Age origins. <laughs> <laughs> how, hard we go. Could, how hard could it be? Well, in um, a lot of ways, Jake, you are kind of vindicated because people love Baldur's Gate 3 right now. Mm -hmm. I think Baldur's Gate 3 shares a lot of DNA with Origins. Yeah, I think there's definitely... uh, There's always like a... There's always a feeling in the industry, right? Where it's like, ah, single player games. No one cares about them. And then someone makes God of War and Elden Ring. And they're like, no, no, it'll still sell a billion copies if it's good enough. (laughs) And then it's like these old school RPGs. Ah, people don't care about that anymore. They need, you know, the fastest, most ridiculous MMO thing or whatever it is possible. Like, no, no, if you make a an awesome thing people will absolutely flock to it 100 percent um Kristen, let's get your number four uh my number four is probably uh one of the games that i have like the most playtime in ever <laughs> it's binding of the binding of isaac um I, that's a game that i own on like five platforms probably i fucking love the binding of isaac uh if you don't know what it is uh it's like a roguelike or roguelite, I'm sorry. Somebody out there is going to be like, it's actually roguelite. Uh, but, I can't believe uh, this girl doesn't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking <laughs> stupid broad. Uh, anyways, it's a... Uh, <laughs> My daughter's so depressed, she can't even say what it is. <laughs> I better go buy uh, a video game. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it, it's just like a little dungeon crawler, um, and every run, you just and it's randomized, and I don't know what it is about it, but I can just play it over and over and over and i've played so much time in it and i don't even have everything unlocked because i'm not like so that i mean I, i'm decent at it but i'm not that good <laughs> i there's stuff in there to me and that's part of what's so good is he keeps releasing like the, they'll do like dlc sometimes it's free sometimes it's paid um but like there's stuff for every skill level like there is stuff for if you're really fucking good and you want to like min max and do these crazy hard routes you can but you can also have a perfectly good time not doing that and there's still plenty to do um and so every once in a while i'll just be like you know what i feel like getting this particular achievement done in that game and i'll just play it for like 20 hours in a week and then get that thing and then i'm like okay itch scratched for a month uh and then i do the same thing the next month uh (laughs) and uh yeah like i said i just i could play it forever it's one of my like if you were like you could bring three games with you on a desert island binding of isaac is one of them when I made your sure. list, Kristen, that was the first game I added. When I made, <laughs> when I made oh. your list, <laughs> it is. That's, and, an and easy, st- that's an easy Kristen game to guess for sure. Yeah, you know, now that we're seven of Kristen's uh, uh, choices in, Mike, are you seven for seven technically? So I have an asterisk. Yes, I am good. Jake, actually, I I put Pokemon Red and Blue for him, so I actually mm-hmm. missed when he when he went Gold and Silver. I missed that, so I am I am four for five on Jake, and I am. Six for six with an asterisk for Kristen. Interesting. Wow. All right. uh, well, speaking of you, pal, let's get your number four. Uh, my number four, uh, this is another one where Jake's going to know where what it is before I say it, uh, but no one else in the world would ever even put this on their top 100 list. Uh, it is the third game in a sports action series of games. 
Uh, most people would probably say that they liked the second one in this the most. Those people are stupid. Uh, my number four game is SSX3. Mm-hmm. Whoa! Yeah, SSX3 is... It's kind of like the closest I've ever felt to how I felt playing Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 in another game of that. Like, it's just feeling like, wow, this is perfect. You've taken mm-hmm. all the things I've, because I love the SSX series. Uh, I had a PS2 pretty early. I got pretty lucky uh, getting one of those, like, the Christmas after it came out. And that was one of the launch titles. So I got it with the, the, the PS2. And uh, I'm not as fond of the ps2 as a lot of people are historically but ssx is like a fantastic series for me uh and three in my opinion is the pinnacle it did a lot of stuff that it's actually kind of shocking how well it did back in the day the idea of like it took a game that was like you're doing races and tricks and boosting that's the thing here's the different levels and it said cool you're still doing that but what if we put more emphasis on tricks and races being separate and then instead of having specific levels, we build a giant mountain that all the levels are built into. So occasionally, it's like you're doing a small chunk and that's level. Sometimes you're starting at the very top and then you find yourself at the level and then you finish that level. Then sometimes you go top to bottom. Then sometimes you cross to different pieces and it, people would like text you on your phone and be like, hey man, you're making a lot of impact on this mountain. You think you could beat me though? You better meet me on the peak of K2 and like and like hit you up in this like faux like uh reality that you're finding yourself in. Um it was a beautiful looking game. It had online. It was a very weird like early PS2 with online um which didn't matter on the PS2, but on the PS3 when you could play backwards compatible games if you had the 60 gig, you could then plug that in, which is very easy. And the SSX3 servers were still up. So I played a lot of multiplayer of that later. They forgot I know. about those servers too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a lot of, I, do, I do that stuff a lot. Um, I, I love some games. There's some games I really, really love. And SSX3 is just like, it had such a great soundtrack too. A lot of pop punk on that soundtrack. Yeah. Uh, some, yeah some yellow card uh, was on there. It was real, just a really, really good representation of probably what like, in a similar, like similar to how we said that with Stardew, you you immediately compare anything in a genre to something. SSX three is that for like, I, I will seek out games in hopes that they are similar to SSX three, mm-hmm. but also it, impossible standards to compare to them. I remember when Steep, that uh, Ubisoft uh, snowboarding oh, game, man. came out. I was like, this could be it. This could be the return. They're doing the mountain thing, and it's just like that game sucked. That game is so bad. Um, and I'll forever be chasing that SSX3 uh, feeling, but SSX3 is a really, really, really fantastic game. Uh, and for people that remember Tricky as the high point, if at all it's even reasonable, maybe check out 3 and it might be like finding a game you never realized existed because I do think that uh, it got slept on a little uh, in its day. Uh, this is the only game or thing, property, I've written fan fiction for. <laughs> I wrote whoa, whoa, fan wait. fiction for Snowbird it 69 up. himself wrote SSX3 fan fiction? <laughs> Snowbird 55 did, but I should have been Snowbird 69. Uh, but and I'm looking at it, the case right now. Mike, hearing this, I think I'm going to have to play it this winter. Yeah, baby. Wait, you're going to have to read us the fan fiction. <laughs> Honestly, right I don't now, but... couldn't tell you what website that would have been on. Uh, you, you would be in like, they showed shots of people in the ski lift in this one, right? Uh, As you're like going up, you might be like sitting. Yeah, yeah. Might... Oh, yeah. During like like loading screens and stuff. Yeah, loading screen. Uh, Mike, that is amazing. SSX three, getting love. Uh, let's hear your number three. Uh, so my number three, uh, I would say that to me, this is like, in my opinion, one of the best RPGs ever made, bar none. Um, it's interesting because this game came out at a time where Jake and I did something where we would often play a game together but then Mm -hmm. because of that one of us would never actually play the game (laughs) yet i you have like all the fondness like i've never played and beaten chrono cross but i kind of (laughs) have i kind of have like more than once because that happened to be one of the playstation games that jake played that we played together but like he had the controller in his hands um this would be one of those games that uh jake played but I kind of played, but like that's maybe why it's more special to me. Uh, it's uh, Star Ocean 2. 
Whoa. Uh, it's the second star story. That was a PlayStation 1 game. Um, again, PlayStation 1 kind of did a really great job of going like, hey, people that grew up playing SNES RPGs, guess where you want to be? You want to be on the PlayStation yep. 1 because yeah, they did. We're, mm-hmm. we're like following up that and we are where all of those people went and we are where all those games are going. If they're like, the Super Nintendo was the JRPG like father, and it and its son was the PlayStation One. Like by by that's where all of the it's daughter was Dreamcast. <laughs> <laughs> the game was the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, Star Ocean Two. It it did a lot of unique stuff in that uh, you could choose a different character at the beginning, and you play through the same story but from different perspectives. Um, and it didn't feel like a gimmick. It, it felt like a, a meaningful re- way to replay the game. Um, it had a lot of interesting stuff you don't see in uh, really many other games uh, in that, like, at times you can just go, like, cool, party. I'm going to go off on my own for a little bit. Uh, I'll meet up with you guys later. And sometimes you do stuff completely on your own as the character you chose. Sometimes you meet your party members and have, like, private events with just them, and it affects how they view you and some of the endings and stuff which is very uh, unique and novel at the time the combat system was very very interesting and helped herald in a lot of the action rpg stuff that uh obviously came very popular in the ps1 era um uh, it, it's also good just got a really 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 good story and the interesting thing about star ocean 2 is that star ocean 1 was never released in america uh, but i played it it with a like uh, an emulated version that was like a fan translation yeah and uh, so I was just like, oh, cool. Wow, we're getting the sequel to that game. That's awesome. Uh, but then, like, every game after Star Ocean 2 in the Star Ocean franchise has been, like, really bad. It's been, like, they, they learned all the wrong lessons. They changed aesthetics. Uh, obviously, Enix got bought by Square. And so they're kind of not being made by the same people. So in a lot of ways, that makes sense. It's similar to, like, the Wild Arms games where they kind of just, like, they're being made by completely different people. So obviously, they're different. Um but spe- Star Ocean 2 is, like, special. Like, really special. And that uh, amazing Nintendo Direct that kind of was, like, arguably one of the best Nintendo Directs in, like, years uh, that happened a couple months ago, they announced a remake of this game. And it was, like, unheard of because they, they re-released both Star Ocean games on Vita back in the day. Hmm. But it was really just, like, let's add voice work and let's clean up the art. That's kind of all it was. And they re-released the first one on PlayStation 4, but then the second one, which was Star Ocean 2, is never materialized anywhere and a lot of people just kind of been like that's a bummer maybe the game didn't sell well but it was a shame i wish we had access to it da 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 so when they announced that and it was like no 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 we really went to town and we did a lot of work and we remade huge chunks and added some of the like cool bells and whistles that you see in stuff like uh, octopath and shit like that it's, it's like i don't know who that game's for besides me like it's it's really remarkable it really feels like they made that game for me and only me uh, but I, I, Star Ocean 2 is a special, special RPG. Uh, and that's why it's my number three. Wow. Uh, just, it's, it, to me, it's one of those, like, very well regarded, like, JRPG series on the PlayStation that I just don't think I'll ever play. Like, yeah. Play the um, remake that's coming out of 2 yeah. soon and ignore everything else in the series. Okay. Because none of it's worth your time. Okay, cool. Uh, what in a great number three, one of your many sequels. Uh, Kristen, let's hear yours. All right. But first, real quick, it uh, somewhere in the middle of that, it dawned on me that Mike said that he had written down Pokemon HG and not, I took that to mean GS and that he had written like gold silver. Oh, but no, yeah. Now I realize he meant heart gold, but he, yeah. but I said soul silver. So yeah, you're fine. You're good, dude. Oh, <laughs> okay. I, th- I, th- I heard the same thing as you. Yeah. No, for some oh. reason, I registered that as. Uh, interesting wrong generation but anyways my number three most important more like importantly pretending to take notes on this <laughs> thing that he's made up oh no no, no. i've got i got well, that's that's six for six i got j and k right there j uh, and k no. and i'm marking i'm kidding no j uh, this is serious <laughs> My number three uh, is a tie between two games in the same series. Um, it's Final Fantasy. It, no, wait till you hear it before you <laughs> shake your head. Wait till you hear it because it's Final this. Fantasy Theater Rhythm, <laughs> the uh-huh. 3DS version and Final Bar Line, the new one that just came out. 
Um, and those wow. are basically yeah. not that strange. If you know Kristen Thorson, this is the <laughs> second game I put on when I made my Kristen list. This is the one that when we did our old list, I forgot it, and I was so fucking pissed that I forgot it. But um, I love, I love, I like rhythm games a ton. Like I'll play any rhythm game. I used to love DDR. Uh, I fucking love Taiko no Tatsujin or whatever champ. trombone champ <laughs> i did I, i'll play any rhythm game i'm not going to be the best at it but I, I like it and i'll play it um and theater rhythm i love final fantasy music like i i listen to it all the time like nobuo uematsu is always in mm-hmm. my top spotify artist for the yeah. year it's like carly ray jepson florence in the machine nobuo uematsu <laughs> we went and saw them li- Kylie Minogue. <laughs> we saw the the live piano renditions of final fantasy music together we uh, did yeah like a year ago Yep, and I've been to Distant Worlds twice, once since then. Uh, So, um, and that's, if you don't know what it is, Final Fantasy Theater Rhythm is a rhythm game where you play along to Final Fantasy music and also has DLC from other, like, Square Enix titles. Um, And this newest one, Final Bar Line, has literally every fucking final fantasy game you could think of except for, except i think for dirge of server <laughs> it's, it's, it's missing <laughs> it's not does not include it um and i don't know it's one of those games for me that's my travel game like to this day the reason i still keep my 3ds like handy is because if i'm going on a road trip or a flight i'll break my 3ds and i'll play i'll play theater rhythm for the flight um and because it doesn't make it doesn't make me motion sick Uh, (laughs) so uh so yeah i i love it um final fantasy music is very important to me and this is just like a vehicle for final fantasy music so amazing um i think i heard you when you came on to talk about the players guides episode you talked about you were playing um i think final bar line at the yeah. time uh, um and i think you had either like you had maybe just gone to the concert with mike yeah or, i think or something yeah, like that i was about to because you told me that oh yeah i'm it was either i think we did half-life and the game guides pretty close yes, together yes. and i was about to you told me to tell you if mike cried and then I came back for this second one, and I said Mike did cry. Uh, yes, did cry. yes, yes, yes. <laughs> very important information. Uh, that's that's right. Thank you, uh, Jake. It's time for your number three. My number three game. As I look at my list, I don't even like my list. <laughs> uh, my number three game is um, Mike. Kind of touched on this a little earlier. Uh, I think just as a as a game, this game is ex- extremely important. It kind of like almost created. And it's it's not the game, but it's one of the games that really created esports, uh, and it's one of the games that I feel like it's probably the most important game in this genre of all time. It's StarCraft. I didn't know which StarCraft to pick, or StarCraft Two, or WarCraft Three, or whatever, but it's definitely StarCraft. It also had you know use map settings games, which oh my uh, god, I didn't even talk about that. <laughs> StarCraft had a mode inside of it where people could make their own games. And from this, and then subsequent release, you know, Warcraft 3 and stuff like that, like genres have been created from inside a mode that you could make your own games in StarCraft. Like essentially tower defense and essentially MOBAs. I think MOBAs without question. MOBAs exist Um, because Warcraft 3 took use map settings from StarCraft and like, and, but had more tools. Yeah. It's just so crazy. And then as an RTS, it's amazing. I'm I'm right there with Mike. Like I love so many of the I, I love the characters and the story. Even though StarCraft starts to get a little out there with their story too. But I love like the characters. I love the story. It's unbelievable that they somehow balance three completely different uh types of like builds inside the game. Cause like Mike said earlier. You really do find RTSs and it's like, yeah, except when I play this, is I have the English Long Bowman. And that's a little different. I'm using Age of Empires right now. And that's yeah. a little different from you having, you know, the elephant, uh, war elephant or something like that. But in StarCraft, it's truly like, no, you build different as the Zerg. And you have a different way of moving around the map as the Protoss. And the Terrans suck. So it's like, <laughs> um, it's just really... It's really amazing what they did. It's it's also it's weird to think about Blizzard because I I uh, don't have Diablo on my list, but Diablo easily could have made my list. I think as well. They're not only like this game, but that that company at one time uh, was so like they revolutionized genres. They created genres. They it's weird to think about now with how bad Blizzard is uh, for the most part, but. 
Uh, it's it's just incredible. Like Starcraft. Dude, the game incredible. barks to uh, to this day. When someone like sometimes my oh, mom will yes. walk in, I'll be like, "What are you? I'm wanting? going. Yeah. yeah, this is Jeremy. <laughs> like, I just yeah. just like that stuff. Just like it's in my brain, like on the surface enough level where I'm just like, like I'm looking at my cat and I'm like, "What do you want? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. It's, For me, that's it's work, truly, work, work, like, work. Yeah, I'm going." It's too good. It's too good. So StarCraft had to be on my list. Wow. For sure. Number three, uh, a share, another shared one with Mike over there. Um, mm-hmm. Well, let's get your number two while we're here. My number two, I don't even like this game. Uh, <laughs> I don't even know why it's on my list. I'm so, I hate my list. But it's true that this game. Your list can't be that bad because Pokemon I've got, Unite. Because I've gotten all of your <laughs> lists except one. I hate this game. Um, my number two is uh, an RPG. A lot of RPGs on my list. And my number two was I played it on Xbox and it was. it took over part of my life so much like i would literally i would carry a giant tv this was back when tvs weren't like a monitor or something like that we would haul these huge like crt tvs over to my friend's house so we could all play the most single player rpg that has ever existed and that is the elder scrolls morrowind Ooh. So there's there's maybe not more uh, a more single player game that has ever been created in the <laughs> world yet somehow uh for I don't know an entire summer or more uh it was just uh, summer or morrowind me and my friend Jared and my friend Harry and like a lot lots of people would get together and play the most single player RPG of all time and uh a lot of people would make a list uh Nowadays, uh, a lot of these kids out there, these Gen Z losers, would make a list and they'd have something on it. (laughs) Skyrim. I like Skyrim. Well, guess what? Yeah, Skyrim is a better version (laughs) of this game. But still, uh, I love this game so much. It is like, it's, yeah, it was what Skyrim became. It was what Oblivion became. It's the Elder Scrolls. And it's, uh, it was just so, I don't know. Uh, th- there are these RPGs that I get absolutely lost in. And it's kind of like, this isn't the the case, but it's kind of like my World of Warcraft. You know when someone's like, I played World of Warcraft for five years and I met my wife there. You know, like they have all that kind of stuff. <laughs> I feel like for whatever reason, Morrowind has a little bit of that in me, even though it wasn't a social experience. Yeah, it was just totally so good. Well, remember in Morrowind, uh, mm. to get stats and certain things, you had to do a thing. Uh-huh. And acrobatics or athletics or whatever it was, was jumping. Yes. And there were times where we wanted our characters to have like a lot in that. So we'd like pay Jake's little brother money <laughs> to like go in and like just walk around jumping. Yeah. And then we'd come back and be like, oh, hell yeah. <laughs> no hell yeah. way. Got the acrobatics up now, baby. Yeah. Yeah. It's, oh uh, my it gosh. Was good. These games were crazy, man. Like RPGs really steal something in me. I think because also I'm very completionist. When I play games, and this was a game that you just couldn't, it feels like you couldn't complete it. I, I don't mm-hmm. know what to do everything inside Morrowind. It would be hundreds of hours, it feels like. Wow. Uh, number two, Morrowind. Kristen, uh, it's time for your number two. So uh, for my number two, I just want to say that I went back and listened to the most recent top 10 list, like to hear yes. like how your format was and stuff. And when it got to the tops of everybody's lists, the first person went and I was like, oh, my fucking God, like the solidarity, because not only did they list this game, but then they listed all the exact same reasons that I love this game, <laughs> like almost <laughs> verbatim. And then the other two people also had this oh, game either yes. on their list mm-hmm. or in their honorable mentions. And that is Tetris. <laughs> yep. I fucking love Tetris. Really I... quick. <laughs> Kristen is so fucking good at Tetris. Yeah. Like. <laughs> She she is not fucking around. I will I will watch this girl play Tetris, and it's like you're watching like it's someone on another world, yes. bro. Someone on another level. I have watched her. Da- like there was a version of Tetris on the Wii U at Chad's house, and uh, at my birthday party, Kristen came over and was just embarrassing people on the internet, just <laughs> randomly like just it's embarrassing my halo. people. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, but yeah, like, and it's one of those things where it's like, you know, when you play with people all the time, you're like at the bottom of that. I'm at the bottom of like really good at pe- Tetris people. But then when I play against like normal people, I am. <laughs> I, I, it's like I have to be like, oh, that's not fun for you. Sorry. Um, <laughs> so. Uh, so, yeah, I, I just love Tetris. I can just play it it's like a I, I forget the person's name but they were describing how like it really it puts me into like a meditative state if i'm having a bad day and there's too much going on in my brain i will just hop on tetris 99 and like it, at a certain point like you you're not even looking at like your blocks falling down you're just like looking at your bank and like yes flow state. like flow state. yeah it, 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 that game invented flow <laughs> state gaming yeah and like and i'll just pl- i could play it for hours and yeah i don't think about anything else i just get into that get into the tetris zone uh the first one i ever played was for the game boy um mm. i had that was one of the only game boy games i had like and i had tetris plus for the game boy color and yeah i would play it like on road trips for hours like and now I'll play Tetris 99 for like ever. I think ever since it came out, Tetris 99 has been my top played game every year on the switch. Yes. Um, and it's just anytime a new theme comes out, I'm like on it. <laughs> I, I'm, I, f- I fucking love Tetris. It's man. so good. Did <laughs> so you play good. any of the Maximus cup this weekend? I did. Yeah. That Zeno yes. blade DLC. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's did you uh, watch the movie or whatever it was or series about it. Uh, <laughs> um, I did not, but the movie's good. The movie's really good. I'll have to. I, I I'm about to um, not have my p- gaming PC for a few days, so maybe I'll watch it. Because sto- it's especially <laughs> applicable to you, because it's the story not just of like the invention of Tetris. That's not actually as interesting as how it got paired with the Game Boy and how it got brought to America. The story's been around forever, yeah. so you're gonna watch the movie and think like, oh, they're embellishing a lot. They are barely embellishing anything because of how ever it's been a notorious yeah. story forever. It's a good movie. Hmm. Yeah, and even like if you think about, I think they might have talked about this on the last episode, but the, just the theme. Like I know it's like a Russian folk song or whatever the fuck, but it's so good. Like, yeah. like and it plays on a loop, and you're playing it for so long, and you're still just like, dude. Isn't doo, it doo, weird doo, that doo, people doo. like people who don't even know games could probably do that theme? They could yeah. probably yes. just start doing it. That's like yeah. it's weird to think about how like culturally relevant Tetris is. Yeah. 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 For a game that is so simple in its idea of just like uh all, like putting blocks together to make them fit to clear a line like it's stood the test of time 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 and is so amazing uh tetris is your number two mike it's time for yours my number two is how uh you and i uh technically officially met connor and that is uh, final fantasy six final fantasy wow. six number two is, yes it is number two and you know that it's number two, because I actually mentioned on that episode that uh, I technically like another game more than Final Fantasy VI, which is crazy, because I could have talked about that game for yeah. six hours. <laughs> uh, Final Fantasy VI, it, like, there's... What do you even say about it at this point? It's like, it's so ahead of its time. It It is so important in the Final Fantasy, like, franchise. It's the first game where they said, like, let's have a cast instead of a protagonist. It uh, changed like the fantasy sword and board like like genre and and replaced it with something far more modern and interesting. Basically, all the people that worked on that game went off to make like the biggest and best like games for Square for decades. Um, it's like so ahead of its time. It aged really well. You can go back and play that game right now. It's and, also uh, like two games, kind of like. Pokemon second generation, sort of. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. yeah it, it, again, it's doing interesting, different stuff that even mm-hmm. to this day you haven't seen fully replicated uh, in other Final Fantasy games. Um, you could say it played it the least safe. Um, it also, uh, it just did so many different things with the jobs and the, the characters as far as like, there's so many optional characters. When you play Final Fantasy games, you don't think of the idea of optional characters. That's not like something you think of. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's like, like Final Fantasy is so like no here's the the places you go and the things you do and the people you have it's very very like scripted and and, and prescriptive and you just like Final Fantasy VI didn't do that and it, 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 it's just I, I I I could talk forever about this game it's, <laughs> it's impossible not to just like fall in love with this game from mm-hmm. playing it one time uh, but this is what <clears throat> this is probably while my number one game is easily the game that I have played from start to finish to completion the most times Final Fantasy VI is probably the game I've started the most times just to like 
just play for a little bit. Just like, oh, no games are out? Cool. I'm going to pull out my Game Boy Advance and just play it for a little bit. Oh, yeah. the Super Nintendo Classic has it on there. Ah, I've got some time to kill uh, for the next three days. I have not, no new games out. I'll play that. Or, oh, hey, it's that time of year. Time for the Final Fantasy replay. Not to beat it, but just to be there again. And yeah, Final Fantasy Final Fantasy VI is just, uh, it's just, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful game. It, it that's is. It's, it's that's like, my number two. I love like I love naming party members after friends in games, but this mm-hmm. is the game that I love doing that the most because there are so many characters. Mm-hmm. Jake and, and I would name so many friends. We would name the girls after whatever crushes we oh, had. Oh, for sure. At, yeah, at no, the time, didn't. shut up. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like Locke and Edgar shut, were were my shut kid. up. <laughs> Locke, you fucking liar. Locke, <laughs> shut up. Locke and Edgar would, would be me and Jake, and then Tara and Celis would be. Uh, whoever no, they would. Julie and Sarah. No, they uh, wouldn't. Do. Mary Kate so and Ashley. I do. I, I do remember uh, when I I was playing. I played this game a few times, and when I was playing it in 2019 on the SNES Classic, I remember texting Jake and being like, "Oh, I named you after this character because I was naming it after like like a couple improv teams I had, and like I need I put like." Jake and our friend Heather Woodward in because they were like coaching a couple of these teams, and he was like, "Why would you name me after that character?" Wait, I don't wait, remember wait. who it was. Was it Gal? What? No, was it was it Setzer? It Setzer would be a great one for Jake, though it was, probably what wasn't was it Setzer. Ugh, I don't know. Jake, Jake, Jake got Strago. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? That would I, suck. I'd be mad at you. Uh, Mike, <laughs> since if Final Fantasy VI isn't your number one, I would love to know what is. Uh, it was the other. Uh, mm. game that got announced to have a remake and the exact same thing that my Crazy, number three right? game. <laughs> yeah. It's Dude, this Nintendo Direct was a Mike's fucking all-timer. <laughs> dude, it really was. Like, here you go, Mike, because, uh, uh, spoiler alert, this game has been a real fucking... I mean, this year has been a real fucking bummer for me for games. I have had so many disappointments this year. It has been, like, an all-time, like, games I'm looking forward to have been bummers. Games I got excited for have been bad. And games I've been waiting a long time for came out this year, and I wasn't interested in them. Like mm. it's just, it's just been. You're having like the opposite year that most people are having. Yeah, I've been drowning a, in great yeah, shit. <laughs> it, it's a fucking bummer, man. It's been a real bummer for me this year. Uh, and you know how uh, uh, the universe made up for it by being like, "Here you go, Mike, a remake of Star Ocean 2 uh, for just you, and a remake of Mario RPG." Oh my, my gosh. number one game. Uh, the best game ever made. This is like with a bull. This is like not even a question. Like I love Final Fantasy VI. Uh, it's it's a fantastic game, but like Mario RPG is the best game ever made. Like it's just, you, I can just say that. I can say that with confidence, and I I know I will never not believe that. I will never. I have no reason to change my mind. Few games have aged as well as Mario RPG. You can play that now, and it is every bit as good as it was when you were young. Not because you were a little kid and things were different. Not because games were different back then. That game is just evergreen. It is. There are games to this day trying so hard to do things that that game did and still not able to do them as well. Uh, it 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 was Square Enix at their most like just fucking top of their game. Like everyone that worked on that game was like. It's just a murderer's row of the best people that have ever worked for that company who had been in charge of all their other games and then came together and was like, let's make this Mario RPG. Like, it's fucking crazy. It's a Mario RPG. Like an and early Yoko Shimomura soundtrack? Yep. Yeah. Oh, it I, never should have been that good. Dude. Like, it, it never should be that It's it, crazy. It has no business. It's it so doesn't, funny. It makes no it sense. It doesn't make <laughs> sense. It's crazy because it's like, it'd be like if one of the best games ever made was like, Based off of like a fuck like one of the Marvel movies, like 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 there have been good Marvel games, but like what if well, the there goes best my number one Marvel game Avengers. ever <laughs> was like <laughs> Spider Man One for the PS One? Mm-hmm. What if that was the best game? Like that would be weird because you'd be like, wait, it's weird that some random Marvel game was like Square being talked to by Nintendo and been like, hey, can you make an RPG? That's nothing like your other RPG. This was not like, hey, what if you... Can you just make a Final Fantasy, but Mario's in it? They didn't do that. Mm-hmm. They didn't do that at all. They it basically invented an entire subgenre of turn-based RPGs by introducing all of the timing attacks and the doing things to make stuff happen on your spells and magic and defending things and 
the cast is like largely original, which is also like I obviously M- Mario Bowser mm-hmm. and Princess Peach are in there, but then they've got the two other characters that are completely original, and one of them is the best character. One yeah. of them is the best character. <laughs> yeah, Mallow. Mallow. <laughs> yeah, Mallow. Obviously, uh, I mean, I, the it, thing is, is, I genuinely mean that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I mean it's not Mallow. It's Gino, but it's, still, it's, it's, yeah. it is. It I is know, Gino, but Mallow pilled. Oh, uh, I am very <laughs> Gino pilled. Uh, I I have been Gino pilled, and I will die Gino pilled. But Matt, no, Mallow is also great. Died right? the way Don't he lived. <laughs> Gino pilled. <laughs> he OD'd uh, on Gino. Uh, but yeah, no Ma- Mario RPG. It like. I really, really, really mean this because I don't want to sound hyperbolic. It doesn't do anything wrong. Like, I, I've i played this game so many times, top to bottom. I've done runs where I try to unlock literally everything. I've, tried to, I've done ones where you just go through. I've done ones where I use people I use less. I've done ones where I uh, uh, try and, and just, like, do some unique thing. It, it it is it does nothing wrong, nothing. It's 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 just it's this this remarkable thing that like now at this point twenty years later, it's still like you find the column of games that it belongs in, and it just goes right back up at the top. You find games that were influenced by it, and no one's come along and been like, wow. The first attempt at this was really interesting. Let's try and iterate on it. And uh, like like Pokemon games, for example. Great first entry. Lots of good iteration. And the games got better over time. You can't say that about Mario RPG. It came out and did a bunch of stuff that people said, wow, that's great. Let's try to iterate on it. And they couldn't top it. They, Jesus, they just 27 couldn't. years old. Yeah, it's fucking It's nuts. a Super Nintendo swan song. You get Bowser being like the most emotionally fraught character. So funny. They give them personalities, bro. Like yes. they've got characters. Yeah. Bro, bro. <laughs> bro you, Bowser's and, got feelings. <laughs> and Mike, you even get your Final Fantasy boss in this game. Yes, just as like dude, a little like icing on the cake. There's there's just it, there's just it's one of those games where you put me in a room with a microphone and say, talk about this game, and I'll give you a fucking 12 hour long podcast for part one. Like he just, just did, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just it's 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 perfect. Like, and I I mean that. I like, love it. it is easy to be hyperbolic when you're talking about things you love that are great, but it's like it's just there's nothing wrong, and it's and I never thought I'd see anything because obviously they went off and they did Paper Mario, similar stuff. Thousand Year Door was very good, but not quite as high a high as Mario RPG. The Mario and Luigi series, plenty of great titles there. Again, took a lot of influence from Mario RPG. Never hit the same highs. Like, there's plenty of other stuff there, but it's just not the same. It's not mm-hmm. the same as Mario RPG. And so I was just kind of like, especially when Gino never made it into Smash. I know that sounds like a weird, like, milestone, but I was kind of like, if Gino's not going to be in Smash Ultimate, a game that just has fucking everyone. Yeah. Like, they're, we're never going to get it. I know that when the Game Boy Advance came out, Jake and I were like, you could put, like that, be- it became a Super Nintendo port. Yeah, machine. Mm-hmm. and I was like, it would be perfect. Didn't happen. Yeah. Uh, obviously, Square and Nintendo have had their rocky past, but like it could have ha- happened uh, on the 3DS. I was like, here it is. This is the perfect opportunity. Uh, the imagine putting it on the virtual console uh, for the 3DS. You had a portable version. They did put it on the Wii's, which was fantastic. But when the 3DS was getting the virtual console, I was like, dude, can you imagine having Mario RPG? It never on the came go? to the 3DS virtual console. Nah. It didn't. Uh, well, but then, the, but then it did get put on the SNES Classic again. Yes. rightfully so. That should have been the first fucking game they made sure it was on there. And now they announced this remake, and it's just like I couldn't even believe it. I got a Star Ocean Two remake and a Mario RPG. It's like these games that are like legit, legit. My top, they're in my top three, and they're both like coming out in some new form. It was just, oh, it was just, it really crazy. was like just like a waking dream. It was, it was pretty, pretty phenomenal. It's like, it seemed nearly impossible. But yeah. My RPG is as perfect as I think a game might ever be. Well, wow. Super Mario RPG. Number one, Kristen, yes. let's hear yours. My number one is final fantasy 10. That's yeah. it. Jake. Hey, your turn. we've done no, a podcast <laughs> on that. Yeah. Yeah. No, uh, I mean, anybody who knows me knows that that's my number one. I feel like, um, I love final fantasy 10. It's it. I, I played final fantasy seven first, but final fantasy 10 was like the first one that I really like loved. I like cried at the end. Um, it's awesome. I, yeah, I 
wanted to play it again like immediately i did all the side stuff you could in the original um the soundtrack is like largely what got me into like video game music like like i really like video game music i'll listen i have playlists of it and stuff and like i feel like that's because of the soundtrack to final fantasy 10 um and yeah i just i love the story um i love all the characters um like even waka i know people hate waka but I, waka yeah. rules yeah waka's cool he well, grows yeah, I mean, yeah, he's okay. Does he's he? Fine. <laughs> <laughs> you said you liked him. <laughs> no, I do. I Suddenly, do. we're the uh, bad guy. There was too much enthusiasm from everyone else that you're like yeah. second guessing. I'm like, Chris, well, maybe you guys like him a little too much. Chris is <laughs> yeah. Kamari pilled right now because she's just acting like no one's as good as Kamari. I, well, I mean, no, my favorite's Riku and then Lulu. Um, thank you very much. I think you. I think well, actually, so my hot take that people are always like <gasps> is I out of the main character cast, I like Arn the least. <laughs> which oh. I know is like a yeah, but it's just, so cool. He's the thing about him is he's so cool. It and they're trying to make they're him They're trying. So cool. They're really yeah. trying to make him cool. Like they did everything. Like he's holding yeah. something. He's got a fucking he takes a swing. Like, oh. <laughs> yes. like everything yeah. they did. Everybody was cool. look at what Jake just looked like, and we all <laughs> thought he looked. Cool. Whoa! What is he? A cool guy? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! They're trying look at everyone. Look how cool I am. Cool. <laughs> We get it. You're cool. Shut yeah. up. No, but that's ex- that is literally exactly what I feel about Arn, where it's like, yeah, they're just trying like to hard. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. Dude, get a realistic collar. He sucks. <laughs> Final <laughs> Fantasy X. This is, this is like uh, one of the few Final Fantasies I've even beaten. But it's it's up there for me in my favorite list. Play. Yeah, play wow. <laughs> I'm I'm Jake, we did a podcast it. on it three years ago. Which <laughs> that, Kristen, that doesn't mean anything, Connor. In in this in the when this episode comes out, this will have already come out. But that episode is coming out this week publicly because uh, oh? we're re-releasing old co-op episodes. Uh, one one every other month, and then doing <laughs> Jake's a top like, what did every- I say? <laughs> did not. Uh, yeah, Paywall. Hey, no, 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 they'd be public. Jake, we'll send it, it to you for clearance. Uh, but Kristen, thank you. thank you for your number one. Jake, take us home, pal. What's your number one? My number one has been talked about already. Uh, it Sorry. is. It was <laughs> no, not at all. It's like it was my uh, Final Fantasy. I feel like everyone has a Final Fantasy. Um, if I guess maybe if you're you know don't have like a soul or something, maybe you don't. But I feel like everyone who's like kind of grown up with games at some point a final fantasy hit them super hard i know for a lot of people it's seven for a lot of people it's 10 uh for some psychotic people it's eight or something like that um but i met this uh, sicko once who said it was nine i fucking i literally two in the head one in the chest yeah right yeah put that put that down dude i'm sorry but like put that down um but for me it's final fantasy six final fantasy six i feel like is just uh yeah, it was uh, it was my Final Fantasy for sure. I loved. It's weird. I played one on the NES. My cousin had one, and uh, I remember playing one on the NES, and it was great. And but it was you know uh, kind of as uh, Thorson was talking about earlier. It was back when I didn't. I wasn't good enough at games, so I would replay the beginning a lot. You kind of go through this beginning area, and then. Uh, after you go through the beginning area, the game like hits you like almost with the game's intro, uh, which was really cool. That f- original Final Fantasy, and then there was four, which was also really big. I think four was a really cool Final Fantasy that's pr- mm-hmm. that's pretty underrated. Mm-hmm. Um, but six or three, as I knew it at the time, because uh, for whatever reason, uh, the United States was like, "Yeah, we're not taking two. We're not taking. <laughs> we're not going to take three. Give us four, not five. Um, so we got Final Fantasy VI as Final Fantasy III, and I must have I must have played that game like a hundred times. I've done all the things that everyone's done. I've named all the party members after people I knew and stuff like that, and I've grinded way too much in an area to the point where you're like so over level that makes no sense that you're playing this game in this fashion. I've done all of that. It's just, uh, it was my Final Fantasy, and I, I love it so much. I, I love the characters in it. Like Mike was kind of saying earlier, it was it was kind of them going like, oh, it's no longer like Red Mage and uh, Thief and stuff like this. It is, but they're like hard tied to a character. That character has its like very specific class, its very specific personality. And then... 
the switch that they do make where they go almost Pokemon Silver, where you go back to the world that you've been in, but it's the world of ruin now. And you you can complete the game without getting all your party members back. You literally have a character that you need to sit on this like floating thing that's going to explode. You have to wait there the whole time as this timer counts on. You have to wait till, like 30 seconds. Wait, is wait, it? Kristen. I tell didn't your, do it. Tell your story. So Kristen loved yes. Shadow, by the way. Kristen loved Shadow. Playing through the game, she's like, Shadow rules. Shadow's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I was streaming it and my like I'm my chat was very, very good about like no backseating and no yes. spoilers. Oh man. And so it and, was like, a I, a, it like was a afterwards nightmare. everyone was like, ah <laughs> like yeah. Because oh. like, she waited. She waited for a while. She waited until uh, it was pretty low. Uh, but she's like, I can't keep waiting. And I was like, oh no. And yeah. it's it's not even like she doesn't like him. She actually actively talks about oh, liking man. Shadow and yeah. wanting to wait I, for Shadow. I yeah, also so, killed a character in Chrono Trigger. <laughs> oh, you <laughs> killed Matt. I thought it was trying to reverse oh. psychology me. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> Dang. Um, yeah, for people who don't, that real quickly, there's a character called Shadow in Final Fantasy VI. <laughs> and he, there's a really cool ninja. Like he's stereotypical, very cool ninja ca- got a dog. character. He'd slit and, his mama's throat for a nickel. He would. Of course he would. And <laughs> you know what? He's actually not a very good guy. And uh, there's a, a big moment that kind of the halfway point in the game. And you're on this. Is it, I guess it's like a floating island sort yeah. of. Um, and you've got to get off of it. Your airship is there to take you off. And there's a big timer on the screen. This was a long time ago. You didn't know what any of this meant. But you knew if it ticked down, it would be game over. I think you have to wait till like 30 seconds or something yes, like it's, that. It's is a left very low number. Yeah, it's extremely low, and he will show up. Like, Shadow actually rejoins the party. But if you don't wait, the character is permanently dead inside the game. But it doesn't tell you. You It doesn't know. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And when you get to the world of Ruin, which, unfortunately, I watched Kristen go through this. She was like, I wonder where he is. I wonder where Shadow is. I wonder where we're going to find him. And then it insults you at the end of the credits where it Uh does, like, an empty screen. Uh He's not in it. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's um, wild. It's wild. I have, by the way, the text I found oh, it from you, Connor. You found it? Yeah, here we go. Um, I've been meaning to ask if you played Final Fantasy VI, so I'm here to <laughs> finally remember to ask you, have you played it? That's from Connor. Me, of course, it's my fave. You like JRPGs, I asked him. This was back in 2019 before I knew he liked JRPGs. I think he probably just found out about them. Uh, <laughs> he, he wrote, dang, like favorite game ever. As you can see, it's my number one game. Uh, I picked up a, uh, I picked up a playthrough on the SNES Classic that I started this winter. Named the characters after that team I uh, that I was on that you coached once. And I got Gao in my party. <laughs> and I nicknamed him Jake. Go, go, go. Yeah. I'm going I'm I'm to fan my camera up. I've got a gal oh, and a ooh. sensor. Oh. Jake's little brother actually got those for me for mm-hmm. my birthday. Oh, that's sweet. They were handmade on Etsy. They're, you can't tell, but they are like box. Yes. Like, like, oh, like nice. sprites of them. Kristen is another uh, I've uh, big got my fan gal of Gao. Sticker thou, I thou, thou. I, sometimes I would just like text Kristen and I would just say thou, 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 thou. Like it, uh, the gal rules. So Gosh. even though... No one wants to be chosen to be gal. Right. There's there's a nice selection out there. People that are gal. It sounds like defenders. I was negging Jake almost. Over yeah, a little bit. And I I wrote back. I did write back. I would have maybe na- uh, picked Shadow or Setzer for me, but thank you. It's one of my all time favorite games. Wow. So there you go. I'm so there. glad you found that. That's yeah. so great. Uh, I I remember where I, I was like sitting texting you while I was playing this in my old apartment. Uh, it's like for some reason a memory that stuck with me. Uh, that's your number one, folks. We've done it, and because I have to get the heck out of here pretty soon, I want to rush through everyone going through their ten through number one again, just so we can hear it. Uh, Jake, why don't we start from you? Your ten through one. Yeah, number ten, we bowling. Number <laughs> nine, right, where are we here? Cr- Chrono Trigger, number ten. Number nine, Super Smash Brothers. Number eight, Halo Combat Evolved. Number seven, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Two for the Game Boy Advance. Number six, Pokemon Silver. Number five, Dragon Age Origins. Number four, Stardew Valley. Number three, Starcraft Origins. Number two was Elder Scrolls Three, Morrowind, and Final Fantasy VI is my number one game. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, uh, Jake, on your way out today, do you have anything you want to plug? What do you want the people to what, do? You, do you want the people to find you on the Internet? Uh, you could. You have to put any link in here. 
I can put any link. Your tw- <laughs> your Twitch, your right, your Twitter. Um, uh, go buy a Toyota. <laughs> go to toyota.com toyota.com right now. cool it looks like they're an official partner of the olympics which is going to be really cool get a um, prius jake and i have both owned priuses great cars that's true it's a fantastic car where are the olympics this year olympics <laughs> i don't know I mean, australia 2024 do you have anything Korea? you want to um, um, <laughs> and yeah go to olympics.com it's gonna be in paris so oh. go check out the olympics paris 2024 heard good uh, things so, about paris uh i really i expect those links to be in there so the olympics page and toyota please thank you okay great uh thanks for being back on the pod buddy it's been good having you it's been great to see you man um Kristen, go ahead and list down your uh, 10 through one for us uh my number 10 is sonic the hedgehog 2 number nine is pokemon soul silver number eight is marwin jizz <laughs> Which sounds like Jake <laughs> said. <laughs> no, Mar- I tried to say Morrowind Origins, but it was, but it did come out as Morrowind Jizz. Uh, number eight, Kingdom Hearts two. Uh, number seven, Fallout New Vegas. Number six, Final Fantasy seven. Number five, Stardew Valley. Number four, The Binding of Isaac. Uh, number three, Final Fantasy Theater Rhythm. Number two, Tetris, and number one, Final Fantasy ten. Awesome. Uh, hey, by the way, Mike, were you ten for ten there? I was 10 for 10 for Kristen Thorson, and I was 8 for 10 with Jake. Ooh. He threw a curveball at me with second generation of Pokemon, and I had Mario RPG for him instead of Morrowind. Okay. Uh, nice. Um, and then lastly, you, Mike, 10 through 1. Uh, my 10 is Titanfall 2. My 9 is StarCraft. My 8, Mass Effect 3. My 7, Half-Life 2. My 6, Lufia 2. My 5, Pokemon Blue. My 4, SSX 3. My three, Star Ocean 2, my two, FF6, and my one, Mario RPG. Wonderful. Uh, Jake, the Pokemon, half the Pokemon you've shown, I don't even know. They look fake to me, but they've got to be real. Kristen, real. I didn't allow you to, what do you want to plug today? I'm sorry. That's okay. That's okay. Um, I Twitch stream. I'm on a little break right now because I'm moving, uh, but it's uh, twitch.tv slash Kristen. I just play whatever. Um, played Pizza Tower recently. That was fun. <laughs> Great streamer. Uh, yeah, follow Kristen there. And then, Mike, what do you want to plug on your way out? Um, you can find me on Twitter at Van Saves Lives. I talk about uh, video games that I uh, approve of or don't approve of. I also get mad at corporations, even though I work for one. <laughs> uh, and then you can also find me Fridays, uh, 7-ish Pacific Standard Time at Jim and Them. Uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe check that out. Maybe if you like me here, you think I'm funny. Uh, go go to that and ignore Jeff. Just listen to me. <laughs> <laughs> Gorgeous. That'll well, make sense if you go there. Uh, folks, thank you three so much for coming on. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close this out with some plugs of my own. Uh, you can um uh, check out our Patreon if you like me and the and the things that I talk to people about video games on. You're gonna love all of the bonus content we have there at Patreon.com/super. NPC Radio, there are shows at every tier, but if you're at that $10 DJ Toad tier, you get three bonus podcasts a week. A lot of great stuff there. And then um, you can follow me wherever you want. But folks, uh, I made a video game recently. Uh, It's called Farewell Fava. At this point, when this episode comes out November 1st, you should be able to play it on itch.io. So check it out. Again, Farewell Fava. Uh, I uh, wrote What'd you make it with? Uh, we made it with, uh, I did a game jam this weekend and we made it with, uh, Unity and Ink. Wow. If you know those. That's yeah, so cool. I, so I wrote a game this weekend, uh, wrote all the dialogue and the, and I did the puzzle design and stuff for it. Uh, so yeah, check that out. I want people to see it, but that'll do it for this episode of, uh, Call Me By Your Game. We will see you on the next one.